Prayer 1 of Master Beezer's Household Prayers. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Master Beezer's Household Prayers by Theodore Beezer, translated by John Barnes. A Prayer Upon the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, use no vain repetitions as the heathen, for they think to be heard, for they are much babbling. Be ye not like them, therefore, for your Father knoweth whereof ye have need before ye ask of him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Matthew 6. Our Father which art in heaven. O Lord God Almighty, the knowledge of whom is life, whom to serve, is to reign, and unto whom to pray is the joy and peace of the soul, we cannot know thee, but in thine own image, Jesus Christ, and that by the operation of thy Spirit, neither serve thee except we follow thy word, neither call upon thee but in the name of the same Christ, and according to that form which himself hath prescribed us. Thus every faithful creature saith unto thee, Our Father, give unto us, forgive us. For thus hath thy Son the head of that union which is among all Christians commanded, that our prayers should be common for all thy people, as being all one body, which thou governest by one only Spirit, and forasmuch as our being dependeth upon thee only, and being in our birth corrupted by sin, thou makest us to be renewed unto righteousness through the same eternal word, whereby thou hast created us, we do rightly call thee, even by a double right, our Father. A happy and loving beginning of prayer, wherein the new man reconciled unto thee in Jesus Christ, thus speaketh to thee his Father. I do believe that I am of the number of thy children through thy mercy, which it hath pleased thee to vouchsafe me, and therefore, O my God, I cannot see doubt hereof, but that thou dost lovingly hear me, and art inclined to help me, and to relieve me in all my necessities, considering thou art in heaven, even according as being in all places, thou art, as it were, in no place, for thou art holy and infinite spirit, and inaccessible light, whose name is I am, namely, of a soul, true essence, eternal, immutable, and incomprehensible, and from whom all nature, whether celestial or terrestrial, doth, through grace, borrow his essence and subsistence. Thus art thou above in such wise that, being out of every place, thou art above all this great universal world, in the seat of thine own glory, from whence thou dost embrace both heaven and earth, and with thy providence sustain them, as also in some sort thou art above all things, because they do all depend and bear themselves upon thee, who likewise dost by thy subtlety pierce into them more nearly unto every creature than the same is to itself, Howbeit thou art in heaven so far forth, as that the exquisite works of thy hands do the better appear therein, and thou dost in an especial manner inhabit the high heaven, for there doth thy majesty shine with open countenance, beside thou art with thy gracious presence in the souls of the righteous, which do harbour thee as a father in their hearts. Hallowed be thy name. For, O Lord, since thou art my father, Reason requireth that above all things I should desire thy honour, but everlastingly, for ever and ever, thy name is holy, and the glory thereof infinite. My prayer, then, bringeth nothing to thy greatness and excellencies, but yet I may here desire that thy name, both of itself and by itself, most holy, may be sanctified and exalted in me, and in all men and in all places, whereby myself do also obtain that holiness which is convenient for the true child of such a father, unto whom all uncleanness is displeasing thy kingdom come. But who can impeach thy kingdom, O eternal God, who has created all things for thy service? Thou reignest over all, for the heaven is thy throne, and the earth thy footstool. Yet I beseech thee, be unto me as a father in mercy, not as a judge in thy justice. Thou reignest in thy word, which thou hast revealed and inspired, and I beseech thee, even for thy glory's sake, that this thy book of life may be opened to all people, that thereby all nations may worship thee, Thou reignest in the church, and I pray that the number of thy elect may be shortly fulfilled. Thy kingdom is thy grace, and I beseech thee to make me as capable thereof as thou art liberal. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. My will, O Lord, is altogether perverse and depraved, except it be formed by thine, wherein resteth and consisteth all my good. Create in me this holy will, and give me grace to fulfil it in all my thoughts and works, for what can I have but what thou givest me, to the end that in my obedience of faith I may do that which shall be acceptable in thy sight, even as the angels in heaven do obey thy voice? Give us this day our daily bread. For Christ, our Lord and Doctor, hath so contrived the petitions which we make unto thee, 
that in seeking first the glory of thy name, he will that with all we should have experience of the riches of thy goodness in all things necessary for this life. Thus wilt thou, O merciful Father, recompense with infinite benefits even our simple cogitations of the brightness of thy glory, and crown thy gifts in us with grace for grace. We do therefore daily crave our bread, and thou dost also give it us, that is to say, even all that is necessary for our maintenance here beneath. Yet doest thou present us with one bread far more excellent and profitable, even the bread of angels and of the blessed spirits. Give me therefore, O Lord Jesus Christ, God and man, that of him I may live for ever, that my understanding may be enlightened with his truth, and my heart kindled with the fire of his love, that I perish not. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Our sins as debts do bind us to death, which is their reward, and to hell, which is their grave. They are as a strong bar to keep us from coming to thee, O most holy God. Yea, which is more, they are as a cloud that shadoweth thine eyes from looking favourably upon us, and therefore the most convenient preparation to prayer is with an humble and truly penitent heart, to feel and confess our sins. For so thou wilt vouchsafe to grant us remission of the same, in the name of thy Son, our Saviour, in imputing unto us his righteousness. Yet herein, O Lord, is thy free mercy very great, that thou also givest us power to pardon those that do offend us, and by so doing to obtain thy grace, for what offence can any man commit against us, poor worms of the earth, considering that we do so often and so grievously offend, O King of glory, and in such sort that, if every creature should arm itself to hurt us, yet would not the least injury that we commit against thee be sufficiently revenged? Yet dost thou vouchsafe thus to testify thy infinite goodness, accepting as a sweet sacrifice the oblation of our hearts reconciled and fully united with our neighbours, like as contrariwise no part of a hateful and perverse heart can delight thee. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, as through thy mercy thou sufferest not Satan, the author of all temptations, to seduce thy children, neither sin to overcome them, so when thou wilt punish man in thy justice, they remain deprived of thy protection, and under the power of the devil to be subject to his tyranny, and to live in a reprobate sense. Whereof do we therefore reap this singular consolation, that this great adversary of our salvation can do nothing against us, unless thou give him leave, and whereas sometimes thou causest us to be tempted, thou doest it as a father to chastise us for our transgressions, or to make us more triumphant and victorious in the trial, which it pleaseth thee to make of our faith and hope, for thy glory and our own good, or for the edification of our neighbours. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Like as, O my God and Father, I began my prayer by the hallowing of thy name, so is it meet and just that I should end it by the exaltation of the same, as thy children, who, bounding their vows with the only care of thy honour, may assure themselves to obtain the fulfilling of the same in the sole perfection of thy glory. So be it. Prayer 2 a prayer upon the belief. I believe in God the Father Almighty, etc. 1 Corinthians 15 Before all things I have delivered unto you that which I have received, namely that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. O Lord God, Governor of the whole world, immortal, invisible, the only wise, for whose glory all things are. It hath pleased thee, according to the decree of thy unsearchable counsel, that man, formed after thy image, and falling through mistrust and curiosity, should, by faith, be restored to the excellency of his nature, and as he sought knowledge above thy commandment, and so strayed from thee, and wandered out of thy kingdom, so he should be reunited and reduced into the path of salvation, by believing thy only word in the promised Messiah, bending the power of the soul to the knowledge of thee, and embracing the preaching of the cross, which the world would account folly. But because we are all born blind and corrupt in our understanding and will, it therefore followeth that all the imaginations and thoughts of our hearts are at all times nothing but evil, our knowledge but vanity, our learning but ignorance, our judgment but error, our virtue but pride, our wisdom but folly, the vivacity of our spirit but the instrument of ruin, our delight but filthiness, our faith but incredulity, our hope but fancy, our charity but coldness, to be brief, our piety but hypocrisy or superstition, and our righteousness but covetousness or ambition. So, O Lord, we of ourselves are not capable, so much as of any good thought, until thou, that knowest how to draw light out of darkness, doest return to recreate us, and by thy Spirit to shine in the firmament of our souls, to the end to frame us to every faithful disposition and obedience, and so to make us believe in the gospel of thy grace, and in the mysteries of our salvation, 
I do therefore beseech thee, my God, according to the efficacy of thy virtue, to change in me all that I have of myself, even my rocky and stony heart, and to make it pliable and flexible unto the voice of my Redeemer, who is come according to thy promise, to the end that with a full and lively faith I may cleave to his eternal truth, for to comprehend according to the measure of the gift of thy grace, the sum and perfection of all spiritual wisdom, which is taught us in the articles of the true faith and sound principles of religion. Surely my soul is overmuch inclined to incredulity and mistrust, neither is it any way able to pierce into these high and profound secrets of piety, where we have a full declaration of all the figures and prophecies of the law, with a most pure and perfect doctrine of four points, which are the end of all religion, and in regard whereof it is called Catholic, for we find thee there, Thou only and true God, the Father, author and governor of all things, by thy almighty power, goodness and providence. Next is our Lord Jesus Christ, thy word and eternal wisdom, therein taught unto us, together with the holy history of our redemption. Thirdly, we there find the Holy Ghost, the infinite virtue of thee, the Father and of the Son, three persons, of one soul and simple essence, and in equality of glory. And finally, therein is showed unto us the Church, with a description of these celestial graces which thou pourest upon her, whereof the forgiveness of sins is the sum, and life everlasting the only scope. Give therefore unto me, O merciful Father, of this thy spirit of revelation, of grace and of mercy, to the end that the brightness and operation thereof may make my soul capable of these great mysteries of thy kingdom, so far forth as may be expedient for me to know, for the service of thy glory and my own salvation, that I may obtain the only true and sound knowledge, whose subject and end is the only true, solid, and sovereign good, both of men and angels, namely to know thee, to glorify thee, and him whom thou hast sent, the Saviour of the world. So that with my heart I do believe before thee, and before all men I do my words and works, confess this acceptable message of the Messiah come, born in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord, God manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed by the elect, and exalted into glory for our righteousness, holiness, and glorification. And further also, O Almighty God, print in my heart the feeling and knowledge of this thy unspeakable goodness and love, extended unto us miserable sinners, in that thou hast given unto us, in sacrifice, thy only Son, saving us by the only merits of his death, to the end that, as the efficacy of thy love hath redounded unto me, wretched creature, so I may also sufficiently meditate upon thy great mercy, incessantly yield thanks unto thee, and feel thy eternal consolation, until that, I departing in peace towards thee, my Father, which art in heaven, may obtain full knowledge of those things that thou hast given me to believe, in the perfect contemplation of the same, the sovereign good of angels and saints. So be it. Prayer 3. A Prayer Upon the Ten Commandments. God spake all these words, saying, Hear, O Israel, I am the Lord thy God, that hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me, etc. Exodus 20 O Lord God Almighty, the author of all righteousness and perfection of life, yea, even thou that art essentially justice, perfection, and life, I do truly know that man, created righteous and perfect, and by cleaving to thee, blessed, but free and mutable, hath through sin turned from thee, plunging himself headlong into the sink of unrighteousness, imperfection, and death, the which hath deprived him of all power to obey the law, and consequently bereaved him of the reward of eternal blessedness. And, albeit of a special grace, thou dost call us by the gospel to the free righteousness of Christ, to the end that, believing in him, we might confess him for the obtaining of salvation, yet are we nevertheless so much inclined to distrust, corruption, and disorder, that hardly we are entered into the ways of his vocation, but we retire immediately, straying out of that course which might purchase unto us the prize, and so through our works deny our faith and our profession. Now as the first and principal manner of thy honour, O only true God, consisteth in believing and reposing our whole confidence in thee alone, so the second and inseparable from true faith resteth in obedience to thy holy and good will. For we must be doers of that which thy holy word teacheth us, and not hearers only deceiving ourselves, Thou hast chosen and adopted us to be thy children, but it is upon this condition that we should be reformed to the image of Jesus Christ, the firstborn and inheritor of all things. Thou hast chosen us to be his temple, now his habitation cannot be but holy, for thy spirit dwelleth therein. Thou hast redeemed us with the price of his blood, and that to the end thou mayest be glorified both in our bodies and souls. Thou hast freed us from sin, even to the end we might be servants to righteousness, 
Thou hast given us the Saviour of the world to be our justification, but to the end also that we may possess him in sanctification. Thou wouldst that he should die for all men, even to make him live in thy elect and they in him. And this is the reason wherefore the institution of our faith, together with the spiritual consolations that support the same, is accompanied with the ten precepts of thy law, the certain and assured means to honour and serve thee, in living religiously to thy glory, and uprightly to the profit of our neighbours. For albeit in the gospel we be free from the rigour and punishment of the law, yet nevertheless the rule of piety and holy life contained in the Decalogue abideth with us as a perpetual pattern whereby to frame our temporal course of life. And accordingly we do also consider of it in two parts, according as it pleased thee, O Lord, to write it with thy finger, and to deliver it unto Moses, in two tables of stone for thy people, whereof the first containeth four commandments of our duty towards thee, and the second six of that which we owe to our neighbours. Also the sum and fulfilling of all these holy precepts importeth, that we love thee, O only true God, with our whole heart, soul, and thought, and then all other men, especially the household of faith, as ourselves. But, O Lord, such is the weakness of all flesh, that there is no man able to attain to the perfection of thy law, and yet thou willest that, herein, thy children should comfort themselves, that there is left unto them some measure to approach thereunto, and so to be acceptable unto thee, namely when, with their whole strength, prevented by thy grace, they study to attain the end of thy word, walking and going forward by the steps thereof, and still with sighing for their infirmities. For all the faithful may so believe, that with thee, their Father, there is mercy for them, in thy well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ. I beseech thee, therefore, O my God, to cast upon me the eye of thy clemency and goodness, thereby, through the effects of thy Spirit, to restore in my soul the breaches of sin, to illuminate my understanding, and to possess my heart with the love of thy truth, to the end that, in all knowledge and obedience of faith, I may constantly walk in the paths of thy law, so that I may worship, scare, and love thee as the Lord, to whom I wholly owe myself, for thou hast created me, and, which is more, redeemed me from eternal death, whence I do also learn to love all men in thee, and for thy sake, because they bear thy image, so that, persevering thus in the duty of my vocation, I may so much the rather feel thy peace in my conscience, and thy blessing upon all the works of my hands, that, filled with days, I leave my life to enjoy rest eternally. Amen. Prayer 4 a prayer to the one only God in trinity of persons. God in the beginning created heaven and earth. The word was with God, and this word was God, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Genesis 1, John 1. O eternal, true, and only God in three persons, co-equal and almighty, of one soul and simple essence, invisible and infinite, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, who being the sovereign good, sufficient to thyself, needing no new matter, wouldst not for ever enjoy thy glory alone, but according to thy immeasurable and altogether incomprehensible goodness, reveal thyself at thy good pleasure in four works altogether divine and singular, the creation of the world and of all nature, the redemption of mankind, the building thy church and thy graces the same. O Lord, who only art in truth permanent and stable, through whom everything is that is, in respect of whom all is less than nothing, who giving by thy word being to that that was not at all, hast, out of a confused, void, and dark substance, drawn light, beauty, and order, stretching forth the heaven as a vault or tent under the same, the earth and the inhabitants thereof, who hast made all things in number, weight, and measure, and from whose providence doth proceed the moderation and government of all that is, whether it liveth, feeleth, or understandeth. O holy, thrice holy, admirable, and amiable, who, being righteous, wouldst not suffer man made after thy image to go unpunished when he had sinned, and who, being merciful, has not left him without grace, who, being good, has not neglected the least of thy works, even to the hair of a beast, the lightest feather of a fowl, and the least flower or leaf of grass in every of these things, graving certain tokens of thy glory and majesty by the harmony and agreement of all these small creatures with the greatest of the world. O Father and Moderator of all things, I beseech thee, let thy eternal wisdom reach to me even through the light of thy Spirit, which seeth all things, which soundeth all things, which searcheth into all things, and which, with his presence of grace, maketh his residence in all peaceable cogitations to lift them up by the effects of his gifts unto the sanctuary of thy super-celestial palace, there to make them see, hear, and worship in spirit and truth the divine marvels of thy kingdom and the mysteries of the adoption of thy elect. 
so that, being thus taught by the most sacred oracles, I believe in heart and with understanding meditate upon the true and eternal existence of thee, O Father, born of none, the first sovereign and almighty cause of all things, and especially of our salvation through thy love. Of thee, O Son, eternally begotten by the Father, and by whom he hath made all his works, who art the principal cause which gives us life and happiness, according to the fullness and perfection of thy love, and of thee, O Holy Ghost, from all eternity proceeding from the Father and the Son, and by whom all creatures do subsist, and salvation is communicated unto us, three persons of properties distinct, yet not separate, in unity of essence and equality of glory, in thee, one and true God, not created, infinite, and almighty, and the God of thy people, and that through this healthful knowledge I do worship, serve, and call upon thee only for ever, without declining from thy word, whereupon likewise, through a steadfast faith in thy promises, depending upon an assured hope and true love, I do more and more draw upon myself the savour of thy holy blessings, to the end that, as the angels above do praise thee, the powers of heaven do bless thee, and all the spiritual armies do magnify thee, I likewise may here below have this felicity to finish my course in singing thy praises, and so leaving this terrestrial life to join myself altogether to the celestial, with those blessed spirits in the full contemplation of thy face, to sing with them without end this song of perfect joy. Glory be to the Father that hath created us, glory be to the Son that hath redeemed us, glory be to the Holy Ghost that hath sanctified us, glory be to the Most High Trinity, one only God and Lord, whose kingdom is everlasting. Prayer 5. A Prayer to Know God in Jesus Christ The Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, full of grace and truth, the image of the invisible God, which is Christ the Lord, who by himself, having purged our sins, sitteth at the right hand of the Majesty in the high places. John 1, Colossians 1, Luke 2, Hebrews 1. O God and Father of our Lord Christ Jesus, and of all them whom in thy love thou hast given to him to be his brethren, it hath been thy good pleasure to settle our true and only felicity in the knowledge of thy holy name and the effects of thy grace. But we are unable to know thee or to feel the efficacy of thy love towards us, but only in the same Christ who is the brightness of thy glory and the engraven character of thy person, God with thee and man with us. By this thy eternal word thou hast created all the world, giving unto us the first testimony of the manifestation of thy wisdom and providence. But... Thou givest unto us a more singular benefit in the miraculous work of our redemption, which doth, moreover, represent unto us both thy great goodness and love, and thy justice and infinite power. Thy love, in that thou hast vouchsafed freely to redeem man, who, proud and unthankful, withdraweth himself from thee, his father and benefactor, to surrender himself unto Satan, the enemy to our salvation, and of the honour of thy name." Thy justice, in that thou hast not spared the blood of thy innocent Son to the end of his sufferings, to justify thy goodness and mercy. Thy power, in that for the accomplishing of this supernatural work, thy word, which from all eternity was resident in thy bosom, of one essence and glory with thee was made flesh. Nevertheless, I do very well know that the depth of these profound mysteries cannot be discovered to our senses, likewise that the treasures of thy wisdom, of thy counsel, and of thy judgments, are a very bottomless gulf, and thy ways impossible to be found out. Also, O Lord, I do not rashly enter into that place which is forbidden me, neither will I imitate my first father Adam, who, coveting to know too much, stretched forth his hand unto the forbidden tree, and, desiring one only fruit, was deprived of all the rest. I do only with flexible heart embrace, and carefully in my cogitation, according to the measure of thy gifts, meditate upon that secret of godliness which I have received by the preaching of thy gospel, and do in part know it, attending until that, being delivered from sin and corruption, I may see thee face to face, and in presence behold that which now I see, as it were, in a very dark glass. I beseech thee, therefore, my God, vouchsafe by the light of thy Spirit, to address and guide me to the faithful knowledge of this great Saviour, whom thou, Father, hast promised from the beginning, and in the latter times revealed in signs and wonders surpassing all miracles, to the end that, being instructed by his doctrine, I may, by him and in him, know thee to be the eternal living God, and the God of thy people, that according to his word I may worship and serve thee in spirit and truth, and in his name call upon thee only, in full confidence of thy mercy, accounting him the only subject thereof, and the only mediator of my salvation who died for my sins, and rose again for my righteousness. Even, O Lord, because it pleased thee in this manner to ordain of the estate of human nature, 
the work of thy hand. For who is thy counsellor, and what have we that we have not received? Grant me therefore in the study and meditation of so many mysteries, so high and so wholesome, that I may humbly condescend to thy divine counsels in worshipping them with this resolution of thy apostle, that I will not know anything but Christ, neither possess anything but him, since that in him the treasures of all wisdom do consist, and that they who lodge him in their hearts have thee, O God, verily present, and do enjoy thee and thy benefits. Make me also to feel and confess this necessity common to all the children of Adam, that for the cancelling of this obligation, which held us bound to eternal death, the just reward of sin, we were forced to have this great King of heaven, holy, innocent, and separate from all sinners, to be our high priest, our sacrifice and oblation upon the altar of the cross, to the end, O Lord, that according to thy unsearchable decree, grounded upon mercy and justice, thy well-beloved Son, having to himself united our nature, the bond-slave of Satan, might lead it in the combat, directing it how to overcome this great adversary. And this hath he done, obtaining for us the victory, when he brake the sting of death and the bonds of hell, and that he rose out of the sepulchre, carrying with him this human nature, as the earnest penny of our hope, to thy right hand into heaven. Of this so singular a benefit, let the remembrance be always before my face, that I may offer unto thee, O my God, the sacrifice of thanksgiving all the days of my life, so that, having my Redeemer for a perpetual object and sure foundation of my faith, in the knowledge of thy name, I may thoroughly learn Christ, not only to believe by his word the sacred history of his conception and birth, with his office of a sovereign king, great prophet, and perpetual lawgiver of his church, also his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension, but also that in full assurance of his promises I may appropriate to myself the gifts and graces which he purchased for us by fulfilling that charge that he received from thee, O Father, to the end, through him to make us worthy of thy salvation, so as I may comfort and wholly repose myself upon his obedience and righteousness, showing forth and sealing this my hope by good works, to thy glory, O eternal God, and the peace of my conscience. So be it. Prayer 6. A prayer for obtaining of the gift of the Holy Ghost. By the eternal Spirit Christ hath offered himself to God, the Spirit which soundeth the profound things of God, which also testifieth with our spirit that we are the children of God. Hebrews 9, 1 Corinthians 2, Romans 8. O Lord God Almighty, we do learn in thy word the unchangeable truth, how without confounding anything in the three persons of thy most simple deity, or separating the only and indivisible substance thereof, each person retaineth that which is proper to itself in the works of thy hands, especially in that which concerneth our salvation. So the beginning of all and every action is properly attributed unto thee, O Father of the whole world, and to Jesus Christ the wisdom, the counsel, and the order, to dispose all things, and to the Holy Ghost, the virtue and supporter of all thy works. According whereunto we also do acknowledge from thy love, and from thy eternal decree, that which thou hast provided for us in thy Son, very God made very man, such a mediator and saviour as was necessary for us, and we do render unto him the honour of the fullness of thy love towards us, and of that perfect obedience which he hath yielded to thy ordinance, even to the death of the cross for us in most bitter anguish, as also from the virtue of the Holy Ghost, we do confess the efficacy and healthful application of this great and principal workmanship of our redemption. But thy wisdom, O Lord, resteth wholly in mystery, that is to say, it is hidden, except unto those to whom thy Spirit giveth sight. For true it is that Christ calleth all men unto him by his gospel, spreading forth to that effect his light throughout the whole world. Whoso followeth him shall not walk in darkness, for he is the Son of Righteousness, and the way to go to heaven. But his sheep only do hear his voice and follow him, as also he knoweth them and giveth unto them life everlasting, even by the mere efficacy of his Spirit, which quickeneth and lighteneth all thy elect, O God, to make them in thy word to behold the only lamp of thy kingdom, the knowledge of salvation, the steadfast good of the soul, and the sure and only means to obtain the same. All people may read thy sacred writings, only they can gather the sense to the peace of their souls, whom it pleaseth thee, as a father to illuminate from above. For so may they see how in the cross of Jesus they do obtain their triumph, in his shame their glory, in his pain their peace, in his tears their joy, in his sorrow their comfort, in his death their life, in his resurrection the fullness of their hope. I beseech thee therefore, my God, 
to pour upon me this thy spirit of wisdom and revelation and grace and mercy, through the force of his beams to scatter the darkness of my understanding, and with the property of his fire to purify my perverse affections, with his celestial lamp to kindle in my heart the true zeal of his glory, with his holy ointment to embalm my conscience, with his sacred oil to rejoice and refresh my bowels, and with his virtue to renew in me an upright spirit, to the end that my soul thus cleansed from the dead works of the flesh, may be replenished with faith working all righteousness, whereby to overcome all the enemies of my peace, Satan, the flesh, the world, and my own lusts. But above all things, O Lord, make that by the efficacy of thy Holy Spirit I may obtain the true and firm consolation of the faithful soul, the height of his joy, of his quiet and content, and the infallible direction to his perfection, namely the assurance that thou, my heavenly Father, hast adopted me into the number of thy children, by that grace that thou hast given us in Christ, who has made our wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And that being so overshadowed with the hope of Christians, which never at all confoundeth, I may be supported even to the end of my days by thy Holy Spirit, which then especially may help my weakness, that I may yield unto thee, O my God, my last groans, to the acceptable and to me salutiferous, as being in the throne of thy glory approved capable of the contemplation thereof in the heavenly Jerusalem, through thy goodness and mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, one only God, be all honour, glory, and dominion for evermore. So be it. Prayer 7. A prayer to God for the light of his word. God, having at sundry times and in diverse manners spoken to our fathers by the prophets, in these last days he hath spoken unto us by his Son, all scripture is given from above by inspiration, and is profitable to teach, to convince, to correct, to instruct in righteousness, that the man of God may be accomplished, perfectly instructed to all good works. Hebrews 1, 1 Timothy 3 Lord God Eternal, who knowest that every man is but flesh, and that flesh is but corruption, so that, although thou hast endued him with a reasonable soul, which doth distinguish him from other creatures, yet his light is notwithstanding converted into darkness, when thereby he seeketh to penetrate into the glory of thy kingdom and the mysteries of thy grace, who knowest that this poor, blind, born destitute of thy supernatural light doeth in lieu of his God forge to himself an idol, and instead of truth taketh lies for thy word, his own inventions, for goodness vanity, and for the path of life away to death. And, albeit, thou hast even from the beginning made thyself, as it were, visible to man in the table of the universal world, that thou hast many times revealed thyself unto him in a lively voice by thy eternal word, in Eden, Horeb, in the burning bush, and elsewhere, afterward by thy prophets, insinuating thyself by thy spirit into their hearts and thoughts, to the end by their ministry to instruct thy people, and finally that thou hast also manifested thyself in greater light by thine own word made flesh for our redemption, and speaking unto us by his mouth. Yea, which is more, that thou hast so far graced us, that this thy word of life hath been and still remaineth among us, faithfully collected in the sacred registers of the Holy Scripture, so to be unto us the image of thy glory, the law of thy kingdom, the ladder to heaven, the gate to paradise, the trumpet of salvation, to be brief, the treasury of piety, virtue, wisdom, consolation, and perfection. Yet the flesh, nevertheless, ignorant, rash, and perverse, hath neither eyes to perceive these spiritual riches, nor ears to hear the wholesome doctrine, but doth rather disdain it, as it were some devised discourse and unprofitable voice, or howsoever it be, suffering itself to be carried away with its own and feeble imaginations, taketh in this verily, the thorn for the rose, the leaf for the fruit, and the husk for the kernel. And thus are we all born in this error, in this calamity, in this way to mortal ruin, until that thou, O merciful God, makest us to be born again of the Spirit, and in will to make our thoughts capable of the light of thy word, and through true faith to apprehend the mysteries of thy kingdom, the covenant of life, the gospel of thy peace, and the assured testimonies of thy mercies. Unto this grace of inestimable value doth my timorous soul direct her vows, in searching thee, O great King of heaven, throughout the course of thy faithful testimonies, which minister wisdom to the ignorant, the holy scriptures. I beseech thee, therefore, my God, vouchsafe to direct and guide me in the understanding of this eternal truth, through the operation of thy Spirit, the true teacher of our souls, 
that being by him instructed I may accomplish and make myself perfect in these four chief principles of the doctrine of salvation, which are fully taught at large. The knowledge of thee, the true God, and the God of thy people, the knowledge of faith, of piety, and of righteousness, whereby I may obtain the end of my being, and therein even my sovereign felicity, which is to know thee, to glorify thee for my God, to believe thee, and in thee, Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ to love, fear, and serve thee, according as thou dost command us, and in all things to observe equity towards all men. For thus are thy children bound to learn, according to the measure of the gift of thy grace, thy fatherly love, in thy well-beloved Son, namely by conjoining thereto the fear of thy name, that is to say, that reverence that causeth us in humility and obedience to shun evil, and do good, and to embrace righteousness and charity. Walking in this sort, O Lord, under thy conduct, in the communion of saints, I shall want nothing to my comfort or perfection, and in good time may depart, my life being ended, to receive peace and perfect joy in the eternal habitation of the blessed souls. So be it. Prayer 8 A prayer that we may not depart from the Holy Church. Christ hath loved the church, and given himself for her, to the end he might sanctify her, after he hath purged her by the washing of water through the word. She is the house of God, the prop and pillar of truth, the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Ephesians 5, 1 Timothy 3, Matthew 16 Almighty God, righteous, merciful, who in thy justice and wrath for the iniquity and disobedience of man didst once smite the world with the overflowing of waters, and in thy mercy and love didst extend thy singular favour upon the ark of thy servant Noah, saving him and his family from the general inundation, intending in that small flock of the faithful to preserve and keep thy chosen people, that they might forever serve to thy glory, I learn out of thy word that thou wilt no more destroy the earth in that manner, and therefore thou hast left us the rainbow to remain for a sign. Nevertheless, what else is our poor life languishing in the infection of sin but a deluge of evils and running stream of miseries that falleth upon all men and indifferently leadeth them unto death? In one only thing, therefore, must thy soul take comfort, that as Noah was preserved from the universal shipwreck in his wooden mansion by the promise that he kept in his heart, so a thousand falling on his right hand, and a thousand on his left hand, he remained safe and sound under thy wing. Even so I hold myself assured against the assaults of sin, and in the midst of the woeful rocks of this world, yea, even in the straits of the grave, that thou wilt always preserve from all calamities and miseries those who stand fast in the ark of thy church, grounded upon thy word in the gospel of reconciliation to the Lord Jesus, and depart in his faith." For, as likewise, according to thy justice, thou didst even from the beginning pronounce the sentence of death against our fathers because of their transgressions, even so it pleased thee, even then also to comfort them in thy mercy, with the promise of life in this great Redeemer to come, to the end that, embracing him by faith, they and their children, holding this foundation, should erect unto thee a temple of living stones, holy and steadfast for ever, for the sanctification of thy name and the blessedness of thy elect. And these are they, O Lord, who first in the time of the patriarchs, then under the law, and lastly under the gospel, believed thy word, worshipping thee according to the same, in certain mysteries of religion, in all places, whether it pleased thee to call, gather, and sanctify them by the remission of their sins, in the blood of thy Son, regenerating them to every good work, by thy Holy Spirit, and of the same grace, giving them from age to age diverse visible signs for sacraments in thy church. So indeed she is thy house, and the palace of thy glory, where thy truth is lodged, which she upholdeth, and advanceth by her holy ministry, preserving it also that it should not fall into decay, and that the remembrance thereof should not be lost from among men. Whereof likewise proceedeth the stability of the church, which the endeavours of Satan cannot shake, because the foundation of her faith and doctrine is grounded upon the true and immovable rock, even the pure confession of the name of Christ. I do therefore beseech thee, my God, inasmuch as thy mercy and goodness hath brought me in, and hitherto held me up, in this mansion-house of thy graces, that thou wilt vouchsafe more and more to illuminate my heart and mind, to make me see and meditate upon the spiritual magnificence of this thy habitation, 
to the end that the sacred porches thereof may be all my love, and the only delight of my eyes, and her canticles the sole harmony of my ears, and that I may so affectionate myself to her celestial beauty and riches, that I may hold one day in thy church more dear than a thousand elsewhere, that this so sweet company, I say, of thee, O our Father, of thy Son, our Redeemer, of the Holy Ghost, our Comforter, of so many thousands of angels and of elect, which lived here beneath in the visible kingdom of thy glory, and by infinite wonders in the communion of saints, may be my whole desire and the sole subject of my delights, that I may never depart therefrom, notwithstanding whatsoever assaults and temptations I am to endure, according to the condition of the militant church, and under this her gallant poesy, to believe, to do well, and to suffer affliction, since that, namely, there is not any such mishap, or so much to be feared, as to be out of this holy temple, wherein only abideth all light, truth, salvation, and life, and in all other places darkness, lying, shipwreck, and death, having their dwelling. For so through thy grace, O my God, praying and meditating, I shall spend my days in joy, expecting in peace my last hour, to participate in the triumph of the same church above, and to live eternally in thy rest. Amen. Prayer 9. A prayer to obtain the efficacy of holy baptism. Jesus, coming to his disciples, spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Matthew 28. O eternal God, only good and wise, thou hast vouchsafed by thy Son, that great prophet, to teach us that whosoever is not born of water and the Spirit cannot enter into thy kingdom, and that flesh and blood are not capable of the sight of thy glory. Thou, O Lord, art essentially holiness and righteousness. How then can uncleanness and injustice approach near unto thee? So it is that we are by our nature corrupted, and by sin polluted, whereby the sentence of death, both first and second, hath overtaken all men. Howbeit of thy infinite mercy thou hast vouchsafed to save from a gulf of miseries those that, in thy unsearchable counsel, are predestinate to life, redeeming them from hell, and making them to be born again in Jesus Christ, thy eternal word, by the which thou hast first given them being. And these are they that are born of water and the Spirit into thy church, through the efficacy of the sacred mysteries of thy grace, and especially of holy baptism, that being clothed anew in the nature and righteousness of Christ their Saviour, they may become new creatures, pure and precious before thee. Now through thy great mercy, O my God, I have in thy holy temple received this sacred pledge of thy covenant, and of our new birth in thy name, and in the name of thy Son, and of the Holy Ghost, according to thy ordinance, as it hath pleased thee in the renewing of thy church by the preaching of the gospel, to manifest thyself far more clearly in three persons of thy deity than under the figures and shadows of the law. For in Christ, replenished with grace and truth, thou hast made thyself visible, who hath revealed himself, and the Holy Ghost also by plentifully spreading the beams of his glory upon us, through the brightness of his works, altogether divine and miraculous. We cannot so much as apprehend the virtue and efficacy of the sacrament of baptism, unless we begin by the meditation of thy free mercy in thy Son, and so do proceed in the contemplation of him, performing his office even so far forth as to die for us, and with him we do conjoin the Holy Ghost, through whom Christ doth wash us in his blood, regenerateth us, and maketh us partakers of all his benefits. This, O Lord, I know by thy word, that like as the sacrament of baptism is unto me a certain earnest penny of my salvation, so must it, in my own conscience and before men, be unto me a perpetual testimony of my faith and of my hope. So only doth this sacrament obtain his perfection and fullness, namely when that shadowed in the washing of my body with the sign of water is effectually wrought within my soul throughout the whole course of my life. For in like manner was the shadow of the covenant fulfilled in cutting away the foreskin from the children of Israel, when, by the circumcision of their hearts, they became careful to walk in the statutes of God's law. I beseech thee, therefore, O my God, as I carry in my forehead the holy mark of Christians, so vouchsafe with thy finger to grave in my heart this divine character, to the end that I may evermore bear and bring forth such fruit and effects as may be acceptable in thy sight, and profitable to myself, that as my Lord Jesus, by his Spirit working in me, 
washeth away my sins, and regenerateth my soul, so I may likewise, by the efficacy of his own virtue, and receiving from him grace, persevere in the faith of my baptism, ready to every good work, and that, as I was baptized into his death, so likewise to be buried with him, by being dead unto sin, so that I may be grafted with him to the similitude of his resurrection in glory, living no longer to sin but to righteousness, whereby thy name, O eternal God, may be sanctified, and I crowned in my latter day with the crown of immortality amongst the company of thy blessed ones. So be it. Prayer 10. A Prayer for the Communion of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then, taking the cup and giving thanks, he gave it them, saying, Drink ye all, for this is my blood, the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, to the remission of sins. Matthew 26. Almighty and everlasting God, according to thy love and infinite goodness, it hath pleased thee, that not only to redeem us from sin, from death and from hell, and in all points to make us blessed, thy only Son, the brightness and fullness of thy glory, should take upon him human flesh, and after he had taught us the way to heaven, should die upon the cross, for the accomplishment of his office, but also that this great benefit might still be present to our perpetual comfort, and for the increase and support of our faith, that his body, risen again in glory for our righteousness and perfection, ascended into heaven, and sitting at thy right hand, should also be communicated unto us here beneath in thy church, in the mystery of the Eucharist, to be our food and nourishment unto holy and eternal life. Thus is there sealed in our hearts that promise that he hath made unto us in the gospel, that he will at all times make us partakers of his flesh and of his blood, and in this communion give unto us the true and sound food of our souls, that in him who is the living bread descended from heaven we may obtain our peace and felicity. O mighty providence of the Lord who called us to communicate in his body before his death, to the end to show us that by death he should not be destroyed, and that he would never leave his church. Oh, what a refreshing is this, in this our earthly pilgrimage, and what a delicious banquet in the bread and wine, consecrated by the word of Christ, to eat his glorious flesh and to drink his precious blood, when by faith in his promises and by the virtue of his Holy Spirit, having our hearts cleansed and lifted up on high, his life, together with all his graces and blessings, is made ours. Oh, infinite blessed is that flock, which hath so liberal a shepherd, that will nourish it with his blood, to the end it may live in him and of him, free from all languishing and misery. Oh, what a comfort is it in this valley of tears to find means to feed upon such food as will not perish, but rejoice all our senses and make us to live eternally. For so and with such efficacy, O Lord, do we communicate in the body of thy Son, crucified and risen again, and in his blood shed for the washing of our souls, when, at his holy table, the sacred signs are, by his ordinance, delivered unto us, and that we do receive them as he hath commanded, expecting that, above in heaven, without any exterior means, we may eat this bread of life and drink this sweet drink in the company of the angels and of all the blessed, then at the full enjoying of our union with thee, O great God, and the joy of our beatitude accomplished, O most desired day, wherein we shall be fed and satisfied with this celestial bread, that we may never die nor thirst again in this new life, where thou, O eternal God, shall be holy in us. O happier we already, who already in Christ, in the communion of the faithful, do taste the sweetness of this celestial banquet, wherein we shall see thee and face to face contemplate Father, Word, Spirit, one only and true God, being filled with thy glory in endless peace. To the end, therefore, that according to thy commandment, O Lord, I may worthily present myself to this holy banquet of sacred food, which the angels do admire and honour, which also thou dost not communicate but to thy flesh, I beseech thee, give me grace well to discern the body of my Saviour, in trying myself according to his word, so as my heart may be cleansed from sin and uncleanness and replenished with thy love, and with every other spiritual virtue, to the end that even this day, harbouring therein this great King of heaven, I may increase in the faith and hope of my salvation by his holiness and righteousness. I have reposed all my confidence in thy mercy. I neither seek nor hope for any good or grace but from thee, my God, and in thy Son, and for his sake I do desire in my place, 
with simplicity to celebrate the remembrance of his death in the holy church of the glory of thy name and the peace of my soul. I renounce the dead works of the flesh and the lusts thereof. I do put off all enmity and malice with a good intent to embrace the lively works of the spirit and to dwell in love and charity with my neighbors. I do believe in the promises that Christ, the infallible truth, hath pronounced with his own mouth, that at his table he will truly make me partaker of his body and blood. To the end I may possess him wholly, and in such sort that, being made flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, he may live in me and I in him for ever. Help, O Lord, the weakness of my faith, support me in my infirmity, and in that desire which thou givest me to profit in the sound knowledge of thy mysteries, and in the practice of the paths of thy kingdom, conjoin unto the same desire the performance of the deed, for it is only by the virtue of thy spirit, in sincerity of heart, that I shall this day receive from the same Jesus the effect of his word, in participating truly in his new and eternal testament, the covenant of grace, so to persevere in this blessed society of his body, that from him I may incessantly gather strength and life, and united with him I may also attain to be one with thee, my Creator. Grant me, therefore, that in this manner I may, with thy church, celebrate the most holy remembrance of our Lord, and of the work of our redemption, to the end that so receiving this great sacrament of his body, with a new augmentation in all heavenly grace, with so much the greater confidence I may again call upon thee, my God and my Father, and more and more glorify myself in thy mercies. So be it. Prayer 11 For thanksgiving after the communion. And when they had sung a psalm, they went out unto the Mount of Olives, Matthew 26. O Lord, my God and my Father, even from the bottom of my heart and with all my soul, I yield thee praise and thanks, for that it hath pleased thee to enlarge so great a benefit to me, miserable sinner, as to have drawn and received me into the sacred communion of thy Son, Jesus Christ, my Saviour. The heaven of heavens are not able to comprehend him, yet doth he so far honour us as to vouchsafe to communicate with us, yea, even to enter into us, poor worms of the earth. For such was thy good pleasure, O Lord, to deliver him once to the death for the redemption of thy elect, and, as to every one of them, so doest thou this day give him to me to be my food and spiritual sustenance, that I may live of him and in him, blessed both in body and soul eternally. I beseech thee, therefore, O merciful Father, so to bless in me this holy and mystical action, that my unworthiness make it not unprofitable unto me, and that the precious blood of thy Son be not in vain shed for me, and offered me to drink, but that, washed in the same and cleansed from my sins, I may obtain that justification and holiness that beseemeth thy children, who have this most holy one to be their host and head, and thy spirit for their light. Let me not be so wretched as to abuse these sacred meats, which thou dost communicate to thy household of faith only, the provision whereof cost thy well-beloved Son Jesus so dear. Rather, my God, grant that in true efficacy I may participate in this sacrament of his body to increase in faith and love, and all other thy gifts, that I may never abandon thy holy covenant. Alas, whither should I go but to thee, the fountain of eternal life by Christ, who is the fullness thereof, and by whom it runneth into us? Cast from me all carnal cogitations and delights, and all these earthly baits which turn to gall and corruption, because I have in my bowels an incorruptible food, more sweeter than honey, the bread of angels, the bread of heaven, the bread of life, which, without any sacrament, we shall feed on above without end, where Christ, according to his promise, shall with us drink the fruit of the new vine, yielding up unto thee the kingdom, O eternal God, that thou mayest be all in all. I do therefore resign myself into thy hands and under thy conduct, that I may run my race in joy, and a good conscience before thy face and before men, and that I may depart in peace when my hour is come, because Christ is my life. To thy name, therefore, O almighty Creator, to thee, Redeemer of the elect, to thee, Comforter of the faithful, who by thy secret virtue doest work this unspeakable and miraculous conjunction of our souls with the bodies of the Lord. To thee, Trinity, Father, Word, Spirit, one only and true God, be all honour and glory. Amen. Prayer 12. To obtain the gift of faith. 
The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Abraham believed in God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Ye are the children of God by the faith that is in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3, Romans 4. Almighty and eternal God, it hath pleased thee in thy unsearchable counsel for a time to give unto men the law, to the end to guide them to Jesus Christ, under a schoolhouse of figures and shadows, even those whom thou of thy grace hast called into the faith of this promised Saviour, to obtain in him their justification and salvation. And when, in the fullness of time, he appeared unto us, clothed in our nature for the accomplishing of thy great and precious promises, this justification of thy elect was fully revealed and made ours by belief in his gospel. But, O Lord, thou dost well know, and every man in himself feeleth, the incredulity and weakness of man, who, being but earth and flesh, cannot climb up into heaven, and to the spirit of life, so to confess and apprehend these deep mysteries of thy love. And, indeed, it is an ancient and common complaint of thy prophets and apostles, who many times have said as much, O Lord, who hath believed our preaching? Also, there be so many impostors in the world, so many dreams, so many inventions, yea, which is more, so many assaults, so many snares, and so ordinary miseries that shake the best. To be brief, so great is the vanity, ignorance, and infirmity of our nature, that if thou, O most merciful God, workest not that in us which thou commandest us to do, if thou dost not teach us that we may know, if thou dost not convert us that we may cleave to thy word, if thou dost not give us to thy Son, that he may keep us thine, if he bring us not clothed in his righteousness to the throne of thy grace, and if thy Spirit leadeth us not in the paths of thy kingdom, holding us fast in the effects of his gifts, upon the way of thy truth, we cannot hearken to this voice of the shepherd of our souls, neither in our hearts conceive such and so lively a faith, that all uncertainty might be banished, and the same sealed with his own efficacy, much less can we feel the peace and joy that true faith bringeth with it. For that cause, O Lord, in thy love, as thou promised to pour upon thy children and servants this spirit of thy strength, light, mercy, and perfection, to form in their hearts this thy singular gift, which unto us is a subsistence of the things that we hope for, and a demonstration of those that we see not. By this so holy and necessary an ornament to the faithful, we do in all assurance cry unto thee, Abba Father, and in our consciences feel that we are at peace with thy majesty, through Christ, being justified in his blood, that we may live religiously and holily according to his word. I do therefore beseech thee, my God, to accomplish in my soul these great effects of thy love, new clothing me with the light and virtue of thy Holy Spirit, that after the measure of the gift thereof I may be able with a true and lively faith to penetrate into the secret of my calling, and to that end vouchsafe so to augment in me this faith, that by the degrees of the perfection thereof it may appear in all her fruits, causing me to worship, invocate, and serve thee according as thou commandest, that my understanding may be withdrawn from the seduction of error, and my will from carnal concupiscence, also that my heart may infinitely be comforted with the feeling of this, that by Christ I am reconciled to thee in holiness of life and eternal beatitude, so that daily increasing in this all spiritual virtue I may attain to some portion of thy sovereign wisdom and perfect righteousness, to the end that when my soul shall forsake this fleshly habitation, the same faith may be as wings to transport it into thy bosom to the celestial rest of the angels and saints, there to possess the fullness of her peace and of all joy. So be it. Prayer 13. To demand the virtue of hope. God, by his great mercy, hath regenerated us to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To the end that, being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, which hope maketh us not ashamed. 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 3, Romans chapter 5. O God, all good and wise, it hath pleased thee by certain means and proceedings to work in thy elect regeneration necessary for their salvation, whereby they do in themselves feel the old Adam to die with his lusts, and the new man to increase in the desires of righteousness, when the Holy Ghost even this day plucketh out of their hearts vice, and instead thereof planteth virtue, may yet to bring forth fruit, furthering thereby daily the rooting out of sin and increase of the gifts of thy grace. 
I beseech thee, O Lord, that as it hath pleased thee freely to justify me by the singular gift of faith in our Saviour Jesus Christ, granting me peace with thy majesty through his sacrifice, so thou wouldst vouchsafe to illuminate the eyes of my soul, as to make me know, to the sanctification of thy name, what the hope of those is whom thou hast called to the incorruptible inheritance of thy glory. Grant, my God, that my thoughts may be replenished and contented with this steadfast hope of thy love, which thou offerest unto us in the gospel, with this holy desire, I say, supported with an assured expectation one day and for ever, to obtain the celestial riches which thou hast granted me to believe, which no eye hath seen, no ear hath heard, nor no understanding hath comprehended, namely, that I may be able to behold thy countenance and live, to participate without end, thy kingdom above, to enjoy there the society of the angels, to be there a fellow heir with the glorified spirits. Finally, there to be fully united unto Christ, and by him to thee, O Father, the fountain of eternal life, and so to possess the sovereign good eternally. Let this holy meditation, and the hope to enjoy that full and perfect contentment, so occupy my senses, that it may be my thought, my pleasure, my labour, my habitation, and my most ordinary vacation, also that all the cares of the world and the affections of my flesh, which might divert me from so Christian a resolution, may give place to this spiritual virtue, the anchor whereof resteth in heaven, that it may lodge wholly and for ever in the secret of my heart, since it is very truth that it will yield as certainly his solid and sole good in fullness of time, as if already I did possess it, uniting me unto thee, O Lord, by the holy mysteries of thy grace. Also thou art the beginning and the end of our hope of eternal life, because thy love is poured upon us by the Holy Ghost, whom thou hast given us, and thy Son, Jesus, is the mean and fullness, according as in him doth remain all that is beautiful, delectable, peaceable, rich, permanent, and glorious above in heaven, which thou hast promised us, of which treasure of inestimable value thou dost thus even already grant me the use by the effects of thy divine virtues, which make me to pierce through the heavens with my imagination, and to establish my soul in thy peace, as if in my bosom I kept the full fruit of thy promise, and did already live there above in like estate as the angels. For, O eternal God, thy mercy is upon me, as I do trust in thee, and therefore, albeit I creep here up and down, through many infirmities, yet will I in patience abide the appearing of thy glory in the day of the coming of thy Son, to judge the quick and the dead, as being thoroughly assured, through thy grace, in the end of my course to obtain the diadem wherewith thou crownest thine, and at the last day, and ever in my flesh, to behold that great Saviour of the elect, who liveth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, eternally. Amen. Prayer 14 to obtain the virtue of love. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. The end of the law is love out of a pure heart, and a good conscience, and faith unfeigned. 1 John 4, 1 Timothy 1 O Eternal, who art all love, and who according to the infinite virtue thereof, has loved us before we were, as also since the time that we were thy enemies, unthankful sinners, adjudged to death and to the pains of hell, Thou hast, I say, freely so loved us, that thou hast given thy only Son to the world to redeem us with the price of his blood, and for us to purchase righteousness and a blessed life. This being so, O Lord, the original and fountain of love, make it with efficacy and reflection to shine into all places whither the knowledge of thy grace shall come. Likewise, that where thou dost more nearly communicate thyself by making the flames of thy love to be more lively felt, grant also that... There, by the effects of thy spirit, the greater love towards thee may appear. I beseech thee, make me more and more to meditate and comprehend this thy admirable love, that I may accordingly frame myself to that love thou requirest of thy children, and truly faithful, which is also the end of the whole law and precepts of the gospel, so that in pureness of heart, with an upright conscience, and with a true and lively faith, I may attain to the knowledge of thy truth and will, to the end, in all and through all, to obey thee with a quiet conscience, the same being the chiefest, the highest, and the most perfect degree of love, that we can testify unto thee, O our God, and that which leadeth us to the perfection of Christian life, which of mortal men maketh us, as it were, angels, which, albeit we live upon earth, maketh us citizens of heaven. 
to be brief, it is that which, in the secret of our hearts, giveth us a sweet feeling of thy peace, which surmounteth all the reason of our understanding. That also thereby I may learn that there is none that can love thee perfectly, until he hath been presented by the sweetness of thy unmeasurable love, and kindled with the flame. That we love thee, because thou first lovest us, and like as also through thy grace thou makest thyself and thy benefits known unto us. The more, therefore, that we find ourselves disposed to love thee, the more should we believe that thou makest thyself to be felt in the inward parts of our souls, to be our God and our Father, and that therefore we have the greater cause to confirm and comfort ourselves in the love that thou bearest us. O Lord, make me also to understand that as Christian charity doth especially regard and look upon thy holy deity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one only God, that we may love thee with our whole hearts, minds, and strengths, so hath she a like regard to her neighbour, that in thee and for thy sake, because he beareth thy image, we may love him as ourselves. For in these conjoined and reciprocal things also Christ teacheth us the bond of perfection, even that we shall indeed be his disciples if we love one another, because he so shall fulfil his love in our hearts. But being, O Lord, very true that the faith which thou givest us doth singularly unite thy family together, grant me the spirit of love, which, leading me to do well to all men, doth teach me principally to love the household of thy church, that I may with a ready will yield them all help in their necessities. Inasmuch also as our Redeemer, the perfect pattern of charity, hath loved his enemies, procuring them good for evil and blessing for injury, I beseech thee, my God, give me grace to extend my love to those that hate me, that without hypocrisy or vainglory I may, to my power, help forward their good and salvation, and so that I may bear an upright and lowly heart to all men, whereby all the faithful may be edified and comforted, and others, seeing my good works, rather thine than mine, may be constrained to glorify thee, O our Father, which art in heaven, etc. Prayer 15. That we may well use afflictions. If any man will follow me, let him forsake himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. By many tribulations we must enter into the kingdom of heaven. He chastiseth him whom he loveth, and scourgeth every child that he receiveth. Matthew 16, Acts 14, Hebrews 12. O Lord, my God and my Father, I learn in thy word that none be true disciples of Jesus Christ, but they that follow his steps, whereof he hath delivered us a sure mark in these two chief points, the renouncing of ourselves and the voluntary enduring of the cross. For naturally we are inveiled with a disorderly love to ourselves, and do presume too much of our own persons. It is therefore necessary for us to renounce our own nature and reason, and to abandon our own affections, to suffer thee and thy love, O our God, to live and reign in us. Then must we proceed to the other point, that is, cheerfully to bear out the afflictions and miseries of this life, wherein it pleaseth thee especially to exercise thine upon diverse good considerations, namely to make them conformable to the image of thy Son, to the end that suffering with him they may also reign in his glory. For it is very true that all men by sin do eat the fruits of the earth in labour, and bread in the sweat of their brows, that they all live in a sea tossed with many storms, and crossed with many anguishes. But all have not the gift of thy Spirit, to learn by his doctrine that the bread of affliction doth nourish and strengthen the faithful soul, that the cup of bitterness is thereunto a sweet and wholesome drink, and all tribulation a spiritual medicine to purge it from the leaven of sin, and so to form every true Christian to godliness and holiness of life. For, indeed, the sundry temptations thy children do endure are not properly a punishment for sin, but profitable corrections of thy hand, to make the trial of their faith to redound to their commendation and profit, that their hope may increase in the expectation of the beatitude to come, that their love may kindle, through the fatherly care thou takest of them, in holding them under the bridle of thy discipline, and that they may be the more pricked forward to pray unto thee fervently, and more and more to reverence thy power. But principally, that they comfort themselves in this lesson of the Apostle, that the easy afflictions of thine, which do but even pass over them, do bring forth an eternal weight of most excellent glory. True it is, that by the miseries of this world the outward man declineth, but on the other side... The inward man reneweth himself with grace in the goods of the soul, 
so long until by degree he be accomplished and obtain his perfection, so that, if our bodies do languish, our souls do quicken, if we sustain loss of terrestrial things, thou, O Lord, dost present unto us thy kingdom of heaven, and if this affliction befall, that any man put us to death, he doth but hasten our passage to the true, eternal, and blessed being. I beseech thee, therefore, O most merciful Father, to give me grace to acknowledge, and well to taste so many sweet and profitable fruits, as these thy fatherly corrections do bring with them, constantly meditating, that the eyes of those that look unto thee in a Christian hope do never fail, that their expectation hath not confounded them, that the number of thy consolations have surmounted their sorrows, and that the end of thy visitation hath always been profitable and happy unto them. For thou delightest in mercy, and thy compassion is upon all those that call upon thee in their distress. Let therefore the invocation of thy name be unto me a strong tower, to defend me against all fear and temptation, as being assured that, having reposed my confidence in thy grace which is purchased for me in Christ, I shall, in my necessity, find thy favourable hand, by thy virtue to overcome all the enemies of my peace. But especially grant, O Lord, that I may attain to this reason of true wisdom, always to be content with thy will, the sovereign and just cause of all things, namely, in that it pleaseth thee that the livery of thy household should consist in carrying their cross after thy son, to the end that I should never but be seasoned to drink the wholesome myrrh which purgeth the soul from the lusts of the flesh, and replenisheth the same with the desires of eternal life. Also that I learn in whatever my estate cheerfully to submit myself to the conduct of thy providence, as being well assured that whatsoever I suffer, all the crosses of my life shall be unto me so many blessings and helps from thee, my Father, to make me go the right way into thy kingdom, and increase unto me the price of glory in the same. For it is very true that every one shall freely receive his reward according to the burden that he hath borne here below. Amen. Prayer 16 for obtaining the virtue of patience. All things written are for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope, patient in tribulation, persevering in prayer. Romans 4 and 12. O God of patience and of all consolation, the just dispenser both of calamities and benefits, and that all to one end, ever more happy to those whom thou lovest in thy eternal Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as there is nothing in thy word but serveth to our learning, and to the guiding of our temporal life as a means to obtain the possession of heavenly joys, so doeth it principally insist in this, to lift up our hearts to an earnest meditation and firm expectation of eternal life, standing us instead in regard of the same among the thorns of this world to the attaining of a constant patience, and therein confirming us by holy consolations, to the end that, having done thy will, O Lord, we may reap thy promise." This virtue, therefore, is the firm pillar of our hope, and which teacheth us not to love the things of the world as any felicity, but constantly to look up into heaven where our peace and joy doth remain. But because the effect of so holy a resolution doth far surmount our own forces, I beseech thee, my God, to grant me this true patience of the faithful, which is so necessary for me, namely with a meek and moderate heart, to bear all adversity, also that I may learn to humble the pride of my nature, which otherwise is excessive, and not to be tamed, that so I may acknowledge and know how to contemn the vanity of the flesh, his reasoning, which, together with the lusts thereof, is with sweet and delicate things nourished unto death, and that contrariwise I may affectionate and strengthen myself with goodly meditations of the spirit, which sustain themselves with hard and sharp things to a holy and heavenly life that going forward I may rejoice and take comfort in these sacred oracles, that affliction in the house of the righteous is a secret mercy which thou givest him, as prosperity with the wicked is a hidden indignation of thy countenance, that the present sorrow of thy children is unto them the watch of some future joy at hand, and that at all adventures the last of their most painful days is the first of their eternal rest in the second life. If therefore I bear any sickness or other misery in my flesh, let it be borne with patience, as knowing very well that the reward of sin is death, and the sorrows and distemperatures of the body are the heralds and necessary forerunners, even acceptable to all true faithful people, because they call and dispose them to depart from labour to rest, from a mortal estate to immortality of life. 
if I have but few of these goods and vain honours of the world that do so vex worldly men, I do live in a greater content, not subject to their envy, but taking comfort in the true and only goods of the soul, whereof, O Lord, thou art the liberal giver, as also of grace to those that are thine, because thou art their father. O Lord, our Redeemer, if I lose some of my friends, even of those that are very near me, yet can I take it peaceably, because their felicity is hastened, in that they depart in Christ, and that I can lose neither thee nor the consolation of thy spirit, for that I shall soon after follow them into heaven, whereby I shall therefore be the rather moved to give thee thanks for the time that thy goodness hath given me to enjoy their presence to the comfort of my life, and not, as it were, by a certain kind of ingratitude towards both thee and them, mourn for their joy and felicity. In all other furrows and griefs that should less trouble us, give me grace, my Lord, that I be not moved to bitterness or anger, but that with a quiet mind I may bear all, and tread under feet the thorns of my life, as being assured in the end to find both the costs and reward. To the same end also touch my heart earnestly with the feeling of thy benefits, namely of those which thou hast liberally granted us, for the necessities of this life, lest, as an ungrateful wretch, I should forget them, after the manner of carnal men that are never content with thy benefits, but do enjoy them without any acknowledgment, and, which is more, are ready to complain if they have not all their vanities at a wish. Yea, which is worst of all, when they have often eaten at the table of thy son, do lift up their heel against him, wherein they are worse than beasts, that acknowledge those that feed and dress them, and do humble themselves in their presence. O most mighty God, deliver me from the counsel of these wicked ones and hypocrites, and let me not sit upon the seat of these scorners, with whom godliness is folly, and the equity of thy law but a sport. But whether I walk or stand still, whether I do or suffer, Grant, O Lord, that I may always walk as in thy presence to the glory of thy holy name, and that my soul may take counsel and be satisfied in thy righteousness, whilst in all patience I wait for my deliverance from all pain, and the perfection of my felicity at my departure from this carnal habitation, when, according to thy promise, I shall be received into thy kingdom in the company of the angels and saints, there to behold thy glory eternally. So be it. Prayer 17 for the good usage of man's life. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, neither the strong man of his strength, neither the rich man of his riches, but let him that boasteth do it because he hath understanding, and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, who show mercy, judgment, and justice upon the earth. Jeremiah 9 O Lord, great and wonderful in thy works, thou in thy wisdom hast made and ordained them all, whereupon the heavens, without speaking, do declare thy glory, and the earth is full of thy riches. But especially upon man hast thou poured forth thy most abundant treasures, in that thou hast created him to thy likeness, excellent in all good things, and established him the possessor of the world, lord of all other creatures, the mirror of thy wisdom, the beams of thy light, the pattern of thy goodness, and the most noble instrument of the sanctification of thy name. Therefore hast thou endued man with any mortal spirit capable of reason, to the end, I say, that in beholding here beneath the exquisite works of thy hands, and using them without interruption, he might know, love, fear, and honour thee as his father and benefactor. Yea, cleave unto thee for ever, using his life according to the principal end thereof. True it is that by original sin we are all fallen from the most singular qualities necessary for the holding of our right course to so great felicity. Yet have we not so put them off as to rest altogether naked, for all that is re-established in us, and in a far better condition, by thy grace in our Lord Jesus Christ, who clotheth us anew with the new man in a quickening spirit, and furnisheth us with his light, to the end that in the serious meditation of thy visible works, and in the right use of the benefits which we taste therein, we might apprehend the celestial invisible things, and acknowledge thee the author and perfection of all that is." that is, how the heavens appearing to our eyes, and the greatness and the beauty, and the emotions thereof in so many sorts, so well ordered and so profitable, do make us with our intelligence to penetrate even unto thee, the admirable creator of all things, and in the excellency of the same to meditate upon the height and depth of thy excellency, to the end to sing unto thee psalms of thanksgiving, and in the selfsame to find rest and comfort for our souls. Also, whereas the sun lighteth and warmeth us, 
the day rejoiceth us, the air quickeneth us, the earth feedeth us, the water moisteneth us, and the night ministers to us rest from our labours, and which is more, O Father of all the world, whereas thou maintainest orders and governments, that thou pullest down the proud and exaltest the humble, that thou extendest thy punishments upon the earth and the inhabitants thereof, that thou visitest them with mercy, exercising thy judgments upon small families as well as upon great monarchies, according as there is nothing in nature that taketh place, more or less, in respect of thy infinite glory. Surely in all these things, O invisible God, thou makest thyself to be seen, and givest us cause to sing to thy name, with a most excellent inducement to pass over our life soberly. But if we turn unto ourselves to consider our own nature, especially the faculties of the soul, and the reason thereof which directeth the body, and giveth diverse virtues to all the senses, and that we represent to ourselves the admirable conjunction of the immortal essence with the mortal, indeed ruminating these works of thy hands, and unable to comprehend the causes and secrets of the same, we yield ourselves overcome, that we may preach forth the victory of thy sovereign wisdom, and say with the prophet, Thy knowledge is too marvellous for us, and so high that we cannot approach thereto. But if proceeding beyond this book of nature, we come to read in the book of the Lamb slain for our ransom, and to see and meditate upon the husbandry of thy sheepfold, and the abundance of celestial blessings in the same. O Lord, what height and depth of wisdom, of charity, of mercy, of justice, is in the same. O the greatness of joy and peace to the illuminate hearts that can penetrate into all these divine mysteries, when we come to thy church to learn thy law, to hear the gospel, to worship and call upon thee, and to sound forth thy praise, we are, as it were, in the sanctuary of thy kingdom, and before thy face among the angels to contemplate and celebrate thy glory. Also, when we do communicate in the sacred signs of thy covenant, we see, we touch, we taste with our eyes, with our hands, and with the palate of our souls, the water of washing and regeneration, and the bread of life, the food of the sanctified spirits, whereof we live, and shall live for ever blessed. Besides, O Heavenly Father, it pleaseth thee to give us here below, in the following of our course, a convenient leisure to meditate upon the most wonderful effects of thy Spirit in us, the singular work of our new birth, the progress of our faith, the fruits of our love, the feeling of our peace in the hope of our salvation to come, when we shall, by Christ, be wholly united to thee alone. I beseech thee, therefore, my God, to give me grace in these godly and spiritual considerations, to acknowledge thy great benignity in the gift and use of this human life, and to know how I am to cherish and nourish the same which is unto us as a treasure, abounding in all excellencies, riches, and prerogatives, which it hath pleased thee to impart to our nature the image of thy glory. So that, remaining constant in my vocation, in the paths of thy kingdom, and free from the cares of the world, and all the vanities thereof, I may so love this life, that it may be wholly dear unto me, only to know, worship, and serve thee and my neighbours according to the place whereto thou dost call me, and carefully to meditate to the same end, how thou dost always minister justice, judgment, and mercy, whereby I may learn to live content in thee only, and of thy goods, using the same with acknowledgment, and always rejoicing in well-doing, always assured that, thus fighting a good fight and keeping the faith, I shall obtain the crown of eternal righteousness in the kingdom of glory. So be it. Prayer 18. Upon Temporal Death. Our life is but a vapour which appeareth but for a while, and then vanisheth away. For the reward of sin is death, and the sting thereof is sin. But thanks be to God, who hath given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 1 Corinthians 15. O eternal God, with whom a thousand years are as one day, and one day as a thousand years, and whose judgments so diverse are holy, just, and incomprehensible, where is the man so gallant or proud, who, thinking upon the vanity and shortness of his life, doth not easily assuage his pride and presumption, even to the end, that he extend not his temporal cogitations too far, but keep them bounded within the limits of thy law, and refer the event to the good pleasure of thy will. The virtue of our fairest days is but affliction of mind and misery of our flesh. We fall as by a gushing of waters, we pass away as a dream or a smoke, our ears to consume like grass that withereth from night unto morning, and the longest time of our course, whereof sleep nibbleth always a good part, is but threescore and ten years, or fourscore for the strongest bodies, whilst in every moment of life, 
the nearest and smallest danger that threateneth us seemeth to be death, which, as our shadow followeth us at the heels, and laugheth at our goodly devices, until she hath scattered them in the wind, and brought us into ashes. But, which is worse, where is the man so holy and perfect, that doth not tremble and quake if there be represented unto him, O Lord, the tribunal seat of thy sovereign justice, where we all, after death, must appear? Thy indignation against sinners is manifest, and there is none righteous. Thy vengeance is ready against rebellion, whereof we be all guilty, which doth also cause that death is unto us, not only as a temporal ending as concerning the flesh, whereat nature is moved and abashed, but also an interior feeling of the curse fallen upon sin, yea, even an entry into eternal death, unless there be for us, with thee, our Father, redemption in our Lord Jesus Christ. I beseech thee, therefore, my God, to give me grace to know how to meditate every day of my life upon this sentence of the Holy Ghost, that it is decreed that all men shall die once, and after that shall the judgment follow, to the end that while I creep up and down in this earthly mire, I suffer not myself to be deceived with the deceitful baits of the pleasures of this world, neither with the allurements of the devil, who still seeketh by his subtleties to race out of our hearts the remembrance of death. So for to detain us in the thoughts of vanity, and to entangle us in the snares of our lusts, Grant me rather, O Lord, to know the vileness and bitterness of this miserable life, to the end that, withdrawing my affection from mortal things, I may be able to direct and stay myself in things steadfast and eternal, and also that thereby the remembrance of death may daily be unto me as a trumpet to waken and call me to the pursuit of my life in the path of thy truth, and to kindle in me a holy desire, soon to depart out of the world, wherein the longer a man sojourns, the more is he loaden with infernal merchandise, which is the filthiness of sin, and the more he cutteth himself off from that portion of sovereign felicity which is in the life to come. Truly, he that hath most years hath most iniquity, and he that croucheth most in the mire of the world routeth most, and therefore to the children of darkness the uncleanness of the flesh is a pleasant habitation, but to the children of light to the immortal spirits, to the regenerate hearts, heaven is much more desirable. Grant, therefore, my God, that as I daily grow towards my end, so I may live the more cheerfully, learning in thy school to prefer thy eternal life before the light of the sun, the glory of heaven before the vanity of the earth, the glorious habitation in paradise before the painful tumults of the world, the society of angels before the fellowship of mortal men, the only blessed and permanent life before the passing shadow of this life, which is fruitful in anguishes, riots, and labours, the triumph before the combat, the present possession of sovereign good before the hope of enjoying, and that, attending this haven of health, I may know how to prepare myself by continual meditation in these excellent Christian consolations, that happy are they that die in the Lord, for they rest from their labours, that death is to them no death but a sleep, in regard of their bodies then freed from the miseries of life, and that, as for the soul, which findeth itself delivered from the tyranny of sin, it is to her a change to a better life, that this death is to all faithful the time of receiving the garlands for their race and the crowns for their labours, that to them she is an acceptable issue of a laborious travail, their delivery from all terror and fear, and the steadfast accomplishment of their vocation to felicity, which made the apostle to say, Alas, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ. Albeit, if notwithstanding in the infirmity of my flesh, the fearful image of death troubled me in the straits of my departure, if the world that doth always too much bewitch us maketh my thoughts then bow to his will, if Satan pitcheth his assaults and snares, and upon the remembrance of my sins setteth hell before my face, moreover, if my own perturbations keep me from apprehending thy eternal consolations, in such most necessary extremities, vouchsafe, my good God and Father, in these anguishes to approach unto me, to save me from the running and swift streams of such brooks, that they may not carry me away to perdition. Illuminate my thoughts with thy spirit, waken my soul out of the sleep of death, renew my heart by the virtue of thy spirit, and put into my hands the staff of thy assured conduct, to bring me out from the labyrinth of this sorrowful passage, causing me with the eyes of my faith to behold my righteousness upon the cross of my Saviour, the discharge of my debts in his sacrifice, my victory in his combats, my life in his death, my glory and joy in his resurrection, 
that, so replenished with peace, I may cheerfully resign my body to the earth, as assured that it shall rise again, and my soul to heaven, with these last words of Christ, Into thy hands, O Father, I commit my spirit. So be it. Prayer 19 For Heavenly Life He that heareth my word, and believeth in him that sent me, hath life everlasting, and I will raise him again at the latter day. Father, concerning those whom thou hast given me, my desire is that they may be where I am, that they may be with me to behold my glory. John 5 and 6 and 17. O sovereign Father of all things, and by a singular privilege, Father of the children whom it hath pleased thee to adopt in our Lord Jesus Christ, to be co heirs with him in the celestial life, I learn in thy word that this inheritance and blessed estate is a contemplation of the glory of this great Saviour of the elect in an unspeakable beatitude, only worthy to be loved, and to be sought incessantly night and day with the lamp of thy truth, which is to see him as he is, true God and true man, and perfectly to enjoy his presence with communicating of all his goodness, to be in the joy of his Lord as a loyal servant, and to behold him face to face in his divine essence, one with the Father and with the Holy Ghost, one only God in sovereign majesty, which is to be united and conjoined with him and by him, unto thee, O eternal God, who art all light and life, of the soul at her departure out of her earthly habitation, afterward requested with it flesh in that great day of the glorious coming of the same Christ, when he shall wholly render up unto thee the kingdom of thy grace, that thou mayest be all in all. To be brief, which is both in body and soul, to be in him and to live of his glory. And this also is the eternal life, a life accomplished in knowledge, in love, in righteousness, in rest, in honour, in beauty, in constancy, in joy, felicity, and peace, a life wherein the angels and saints incessantly do sound out and celebrate, O Lord, thy great name, in perfect and ravishing melody, replenished both with a desire and a fullness of the celestial bread, Jesus Christ, God and man, without this desire breeding any grief, or this fullness any molestation, in sum, a life which by the full view that we shall have of thy eternal deity, O Almighty God, shall make us know thee, as thou hast known us, and as thou art in trinity of persons, Father, Word, Spirit, and in unity of essence. Likewise, to love thee according to the excellency of thy nature, with our whole hearts and thoughts, and our whole strength and might, and in this love to obtain our perfect and full contentment. To this heavenly life, O Lord, my soul directeth her flight. This is the mark that she aimeth at, the end whereto she tendeth, and the reward that she by her grace promiseth herself for seeking after thy well-beloved Son, in whom it pleaseth thee to be my God and my Father. Oh, I shall indeed go and live in this holy and sacred place of the habitation of thy glory, and there shall contemplate that which never I saw under the heaven, neither ear hath heard nor heart comprehended, of the solid riches which thou dost keep from all eternity for thy children. I shall see, I say, these divine wonders in thy sanctuary, in thy light inaccessible for all flesh, knowing in the brightness of thy countenance thy infinite power, O Father, thy incomprehensible wisdom, O Son, and thy incomparable virtue, O Holy Ghost, one only true God. A knowledge so singular and precious that therein resteth all the felicity of the angels and saints, their only plentiful reward, their scepter, the diadem of their glory, and the full and perpetual joy that covereth their heads, as with a crown of victory, in a peace durable for ever. I beseech thee, therefore, O Lord, to give me grace, that withdrawing my affection more and more from the dark cloisters of the earth, sprinkled with tears, I may lift up my desires to the lightsome habitation of thy deity, where the treasures and incomparable joys of thy paradise do remain in an eternal life so that I may finish my course in an earnest and perpetual meditation of this angelical and divine being, and comforting myself incessantly night and day, in that the promises made unto me through my Saviour Jesus Christ, to the end that, in my last hour, come out of my misery and entered into my felicity, I shall, with a happy flight, go to take my rest above in thy peace. O my God, which surmounteth all understanding, and for to sing psalms of thanksgiving unto thee without end. So be it. Prayer 20 A Prayer Upon Eternal Death Of those that sleep in the dust of the earth, some shall awake to everlasting life, others to rebuke and shame without end. Their worms shall not die, 
and their fire shall not be quenched, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Daniel 12, Isaiah 66, Matthew 15 Almighty God, for whose glory all nations are created, Thou which art the mighty and the faithful God, keeping Thy covenant and free mercy with a thousand generations of those that love Thee and obey Thy commandments, and which givest again the very same unto those that hate Thee, and rebel against Thee with every of them even to their face, whose will is the just and sovereign cause of all that is done in heaven and in earth, whose counsels are unsearchable and judgments most profound and admirable. O Father and Governor of all things, Thou hast even from the beginning of Thy unspeakable goodness framed man and reclothed him with such an excellency as did sufficiently preach forth the infinite power of Thy hand, which had created him such a one. I will not, neither can I ascend higher than Thy word teacheth me, to inquire wherefore Thou wouldst not so establish the blessed being of this, the greatest and chiefest of Thy visible works, that he might not fall. I have matter enough to occupy the strength of my soul, to meditate upon, and to have in detestation, yea, even before thy majesty, to accuse the pride of our nature, which thought not itself in honour sufficient, unless it were equal with thy deity, freeing itself from all fear and obedience unto thee, and by that rash ingratitude cast himself headlong from innocency into sin, from life into temporal and eternal death. To thee, O Lord, belongeth righteousness, and to man confusion and shame, and thou, after thy good pleasure, showest mercy to whom thou wilt show mercy. The vain philosophy and foolish curiosity, which is not content with the simplicity of Christian faith, retained within the limits of thy sacred oracles, shall make much inquiry about this fall of Adam, to the end, if she could, to penetrate into thy secret counsel about the creation and end of thy works. Yea, even in that which toucheth the election and reprobation of mankind, she dareth, in this bottomless pit, to discourse of thy infinite justice, and the argument of thy incomprehensible glory, measuring both the one and the other with her terrestrial conceits, for to declare in her imaginations thy grace to the elect, and thy judgment against the reprobate, daring to plead their cause, as also she will resolve of their estate after this life, and of the equality of their punishments." But thy children, O Heavenly Father, instructed by thy doctrine through the light of thy Spirit, will in their hearts humbly reverence thy decrees, which are always just, even in the first condemnation of all mankind, and will be content to magnify thy goodness for the grace that it hath pleased thee to bestow upon them in Jesus Christ, adopting them by him of thy free mercy into thy family. For they have learned in thy school that the inaccessible brightness of thy judgments dazzleth the best-sighted minds and spirits, yea, wasteth and consumeth them when they presume to approach to inquire the secret causes. This do I know, neither will I know any more, that all things do work for the best in thy elect, because, that having known them before all ages, thou hast also predestinated them to be made conformable to the image of thy Son, called and justified them to be glorified. The vessels of wrath prepared to perdition to feel none of these free mercies and celestial riches, whereof it comes that when they think upon death, they see nothing but fearful, horrible, damnable, all intolerable pain, without diminution or end, an infernal, devilish, and endless torment, a gnashing of teeth with blasphemy and despair, a perpetual disquiet both in body and soul, an eternity to their woe and damnation, and, which is worse, a most merciful God, whom they shall know to be in heaven, and yet not to be their God, but their adversary and sovereign judge, to be as secure and rigorous to them as he shall be gentle and favourable to his children. This is, in sum, all that the reprobate may expect, or hope for in death. This also maketh, that when they find they are utterly destitute of the nature of their freedom, which thy elect, O Lord, do carry with them, in this sin of nature, namely faith in Christ, dead for their sins, and risen again for their righteousness, these miserable men depart this, their earthly habitation, with great grief and trembling, usually at the hour of death casting forth many woeful sobs, infallible forerunners of their misery at hand, as in truth they want no more thereof but the proof that they are going to make of the eternal torments with the devils in the burning lake of fire and brimstone, which is never quenched, given to the soul presently upon temporal death, and to both body and soul in the day of the resurrection of all flesh. I say in the second and eternal death, a death which continueth without dying, and without consuming or destroying, that which it makes to languish forever in a furnace, always burning, devouring, and consuming, 
amongst which unspeakable torments, yea, such as man's thought is not able to conceive, this pain is not the least to be damned, but rather another cruel death, that they never have any motion of the spirit to repent or convert unto thee the only and true God. I beseech thee, therefore, O Lord, that as thou hast given me grace to believe that by thy grace I am made a vessel of mercy, I may live in the life of the righteous, sanctified by the Spirit of Christ, to depart happily in him, and so to ascend unto thee, into thy new Zion, and there to receive the price of the victorious crown, which this great Saviour of the elect hath purchased for the perfection of their glory. So be it. Prayer 21 A Morning Prayer O Lord, even in the morning hear my voice. Only in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. O Lord, I cry unto thee, and early shall my prayer come before thee. Let my help and beginning be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who hath made heaven and earth. Psalm 5 and 88 O Lord, my God, eternal and almighty, to whom I owe all glory and obedience, I do humbly prostrate myself before thy face, and lift up my heart and voice to thee, my Father, which art in heaven, to sanctify thy name, to crave thy mercy, and to give thee thanks for thy benefits. I acknowledge of thy providence and benignity, that having passed this night under thy guard and protection, I may yet see the light of the day, and in the works of thy hands contemplate the greatness of the power, and here below enjoy those temporal benefits that thou pourest plentifully or largely upon thy creatures. But because of thy unmeasurable bounty thou makest earthly things common to all men, and that the effects of the sun do stand us no stead, but for the life of the body, I beseech thee, merciful Father, more and more to raise upon my heart thy eternal light, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the virtue of thy Spirit so to scatter the darkness of my understanding, and to break the hardness of my heart, that so far as it may suffice for my salvation, I may apprehend the glory of thy kingdom, and the mysteries of Christian faith, together with the duty of my calling, that I may constantly walk in the same, in a good conscience, and as before thee, the searcher of our hearts, with all my thoughts, worshipping and loving thee in spirit and truth, according to thy word. Loving also in thee, my neighbours as myself, to pleasure them so far forth as I may, by thy grace, but because my ignorance and imperfections do carry me far from such wisdom and fulfilling of righteousness, being a poor sinner, weak in faith, slow in hope, cold in charity, and polluted with many offences that make me worthy of death and of hell. I beseech thee, my God, in thy fatherly love, to bear with these my defects, and to forgive me my trespasses, in the name of thy Son, our Mediator and Saviour, accepting his sacrifice as a full satisfaction for my sins, and imputing unto me his righteousness, to life everlasting. Yea, and to the same end also vouchsafe to increase in my soul the gifts of thy spirit, so as I may from better to better prosecute my life in the path of thine elect, being through thy power freed from the temptations of the devil, the world, and my own flesh, and by thy blessing preserved from the dangers and miseries of this poor life, always notwithstanding content with whatsoever it shall please thee to bestow on me. Since thou art my father, I cannot but expect a happy end of all my estates, having already received of thy mercy the assured pledge of salvation, forgiveness of sins. But, Lord, grant especially that this thy grace in Jesus Christ may be unto me a comfort and light all the days of my life, especially in the darkness of my death, to retain and hold me fast in the hope of my salvation, that with a lively faith, at my last gasp, I may speak these words of my Saviour upon the cross, Into thy hands, O Father, I commend my spirit, whereby my soul also inwardly may hear the same Christ saying unto me, as unto the poor penitent thief, Son, rejoice, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise, so that, full of peace by the effects of thy spirit, I may cheerfully leave my body to the earth, assured of the resurrection, and that my soul may, by the angels, be guided to the rest of the blessed, and vouchsafe, O Lord, to do the like favour to all men, even as I crave these things, in the prayer which thy Son hath taught me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, world without end. Amen. Likewise, my God, increase in me faith working every good work, and give me grace constantly to persevere, and thereon to make confession even to my last gasp, saying, 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the flesh, and the life everlasting. This is my faith, O Lord, wherein I will live and die, as also in the observation of thy holy commandments, comprised in these two, that we love thee with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our thoughts, and our neighbors as ourselves. Thus thy grace, O my God and Father, be with me, and thy blessing upon all the works of my hands. So be it. Prayer 22. A Prayer Among a Family. At noon, at night, and in the morning, I will cry unto God, and the Eternal shall deliver me. I will make a noise, and he shall hear my voice, said David. And Daniel kneeled down three times a day in his house, prayed unto, and magnified his God. Psalm 55 and 18, Daniel 6. Our help and beginning be in the name of God. O Lord our God and our Father, only great in glory and of infinite power, it hath pleased thee so far forth to honour men, poor worms of the earth, that they may in full confidence, in thy love and bounty, present themselves before thy face, to magnify thy name, to talk of thy beneficence, and to crave thy mercy. We humbly beseech thee, therefore, by thy Spirit, to dispose of our souls, our hearts, and our lips to glorify thee, and so to call upon thee, that our vows may be acceptable unto thee, and our prayers heard. We confess ourselves in thy presence to be so great sinners that our unworthiness will not suffer us to look up unto heaven without fear that thou shouldst, in thy just wrath, thunder upon us. Neither can we cast our eyes upon the earth, but we shall see, as it were, hell open for the reward of our wickedness, for we are, not only as the children of Adam, conceived and born in sin, worthy of thy curse, but also by our own faults, lusts, uncleanness, bad thoughts, and wicked works, wherein too, through our corruption and frailty, we do daily fall, which also, in our consciences, are so many witnesses to condemn us, and, as it were, heralds that do denounce unto us death and hell. But, O Lord, thy mercies do infinitely exceed our malice, and thy eternal compassions are upon sinners that convert and turn unto thee. Thou art that pitiful father that gladly received his prodigal and unthrifty son, that loving shepherd that carefully seeketh the lost sheep, that charitable physician that freely cometh to the sick to cure them. We, therefore, the children of thy love, the sheep of thy fold, and the poor in spirit, do most humbly beseech thee, in the name of thy well-beloved Son, our Mediator Jesus Christ, to vouchsafe to take away all our calamities in pardoning our sins, because thou hast given us this great Saviour in the world, to the end that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. We are baptized in his name, we have received his gospel, and he giveth us his body in thy church for spiritual food, that we may live in him and of him forever blessed. Give us grace, therefore, O our God, with a true and lively faith, upheld by hope, and doing every good work, to apprehend, to the glory of thy name, and the peace of our souls, these great benefits that are purchased for us in the death and passion of the same, our Redeemer, that we may incessantly yield praisings unto thee, and live in holiness, according to thy word. For the performance hereof vouchsafe to increase the gifts of thy Spirit in our hearts, whereby the desires of the flesh and vanities of the world may be mortified, and the pure fire of thy love so kindled, that we may love, honour, and serve thee with all our souls, with all our strengths, with all our minds, and loving our neighbours as ourselves, to please them in all duties of love to our power. Strengthen us likewise with thy virtue, O Almighty God, against the temptations and assaults of Satan, delivering us victoriously, preserving us also from such dangers and miseries as everywhere follow us at the heels of this life, and above all giving us grace, in whatsoever estate we be, still to be content with thy will, which can never be other than good and just, and to us profitable, because we are of the number of thy children. So let thy peace be in us, and upon all the works of our hands, that we may haply pass the rest of our days, walking every of us in his family, in the duty of our vocation, 
in a good conscience, as before thy faith, to whom nothing is hid, and meditating diligently upon the shortness and afflictions of this our life, that so we may advance thee, and finally end in the wisdom of true Christians, whereby we may principally learn to desire heaven, and patiently to take all human crosses, and whatsoever may seem to us most grievous to the flesh, knowing that all things shall turn to our good, always provided that we constantly persevere in thy service, for so we shall live and die with Christ, that we may enter into his joys in heaven, there to behold his glory. Furthermore, howsoever unworthy sinners we are, yet, O Lord, inasmuch as thou hast commanded us to pray for one another to the advancement of thy kingdom, we pray to thee for all men that it may please thee so to work, that they, who as yet have not the knowledge of thy holy gospel, may, by the preaching thereof and the illumination of thy Holy Spirit, be brought to know thee, the only and true God, and him whom thou hast sent, Jesus Christ, to save the world, and also that they whom thou hast already visited with this grace, as ourselves, may daily increase in thy spiritual blessings, so that, altogether, we may worship thee with heart and mouth in one spirit, one faith, and one baptism. And since thou hast also ordained governments and callings, that all people may be governed in the fear of thy name, and to common commodity, we beseech thee to inspire and bless our queen, and all princes, magistrates, and superiors, that have the government of thy sword upon earth, that every of them, reigning in godliness and righteousness, may employ their power, which they hold from thee, to cause thee to be served and honoured, and to the tranquillity, peace, and relief of their subjects, wholly submitting themselves and their people to thy holy word. Likewise, for the publishing of thy word in all places, vouchsafe more and more with thy gifts to enrich the pastors and doctors of thy church, and to daily to raise up more to execute in a good conscience their charge to the edification and perfection of thy holy temple, whereof, in general, O Lord, and of every faithful, vouchsafe to show thyself the almighty protector to the confusion of all the adversaries of the name of Christ and of his holy church. We also pray thee for all those whom thou visitest with tribulation, whether it be sickness of body or anguish of soul, that thou, O merciful Father, vouchsafe to give them comfort and patience to the bearing of their calamities and deliverance from their afflictions. Asking all these things of thee in the name of thy Son, our Mediator, and as he hath taught us to pray, our Father which art in heaven, etc., we also beseech thee, O Lord, to increase and confirm us in the Catholic faith of thy Church, to the end it may take lively root in our souls to fructify to all righteousness and good works, and that even to our last gasp we may make like confession thereof, as we do now both with heart and mouth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, etc., and because the faith of thy children, O Lord, is inseparable from the obedience due to thy word, especially in the Ten Commandments of the Law, and that thou dost ordain that we should have them perpetually in our hearts and mouths, to keep them and to teach them to our families. Give us grace to our powers to conform ourselves to the same, even as we understand that they were delivered from thy mouth, saying, Hear, Israel, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. 1. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 2. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, or the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them, for I am the Lord thy God, a jealous God, that visiteth the sins of the fathers upon the children, to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. 3. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. For remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labor and do all that thou hast to do, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. In it thou shalt do no manner of thing, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that therein is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. 5. Honour thy father and mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 6. Thou shalt do no murder. 7. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 8. Thou shalt not steal. 9. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife. 
nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. And the sum of all these commandments is this, that we love thee, O Lord, with all our hearts, and with all our minds, and our neighbours as ourselves. Thy blessing, therefore, O our God and Father, with the peace of our Lord Jesus, and the comfort of the Holy Ghost, be thus given unto us by thy grace, and remain with us for ever. Amen. Prayer 23 A Prayer Before Meat The eyes of all creatures look up unto thee, O Lord. Thou givest them meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand, and fillest with thy blessing every living thing, etc. Psalm 145 O everlasting God and Father, we beseech thee to extend thy blessing upon us, thy poor children and servants, and upon the food which it pleaseth thee of thy goodness to give unto us for the sustenance of our life that we may use the same soberly and with thanksgiving, as thou hast commanded. But above all things give us grace to desire, and especially to seek the spiritual bread of thy word, wherewith our souls may be fed eternally, in the name and to the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one only and true God, who liveth and reigneth the world without end. Amen. Prayer 24. A prayer to give thanks after meat. Whether we eat or drink, or whatsoever we do, we must do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10 O eternal God, our Father, we yield thee thanks, for that it hath pleased thee to nourish and feed us, ministering unto us all that is needful for this life, and making us to enjoy so many temporal benefits as thou dost largely pour upon us thy creatures. We beseech thee of thy goodness, vouchsafe to continue them the rest of our days. But above all we praise thee for the spiritual food, that by thy word thou givest to our souls, to the end they may for ever live in bliss, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer, to whom with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one only and true God, be all honour and glory for ever. Amen. Prayer 25 An Evening Prayer Among a Family It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to tell of thy truth in the night season, I will lay me down in peace, and take my rest, for it is Thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Psalm 92 and 4 O Lord, our God and Father, as Thy people Israel offered unto Thee their evening sacrifice, so do we offer unto Thee the oblation of our humble and contrite hearts, that we may glorify Thy name, and obtain remission of our sins. We praise Thee, therefore, and yield Thee thanks for Thy benefits, namely, for that it hath pleased thee to let us pass this day under thy protection and safeguard, without the which we might have incurred many miseries and dangers, but, because by our corruption and frailty we have diversely offended thee, in thought, word, and deed, and that thy mercy is upon all those to whom thou vouchsafest to be a father in our Lord Jesus Christ, and that call upon thy name, we beseech thee to forgive us our sins and to accept of his righteousness, in the merit of his death, in discharge of our debts, so that, as everything is now hidden from our eyes by the night which thou givest us for the rest of our bodies, so our offences may be buried out of thy sight in the sepulchre of the same Christ, whereby our souls may have in him their spiritual rest. Alas, we know that Satan, the prince of darkness, lieth always in wait to hurt us, seeking principally to make a breach into our hearts when we stand least upon our guard. But, O Almighty God, in thy presence also are the thousands of angels to watch on those whom thou hast called to the inheritance of thy salvation, of which number we do believe ourselves to be, through the mercy which it hath pleased thee to show us. Give us grace, therefore, to be delivered from the temptations of the devil, from uncleanness and troublesome dreams, wherein to our infirmity doth lead us, and also from all other dangers, to the end our body receiving, through thy blessing, a peaceable and quiet sleep for their ease, our minds may watch more freely unto thee, who art their rest and their life, and in the meditation of thy love, that to-morrow we may arise so much the readier to glorify and serve thee, every one in his vocation. Thus running our race in the path of thy elect, we may with joy expect the desired hour for our flesh to rest in the earth, that our souls may be lodged in heaven, and at the last day be raised again in glory with all the saints, to enjoy the accomplishment of our felicity. Howbeit in the meantime, whilst we comfort ourselves in this hope, O Heavenly Father, we do recommend unto thee the peace and preservation of thy church, the estate of this kingdom, and all such as be afflicted with sickness, or any other tribulation, 
beseeching thee to give to thy children and servants, whereof to take comfort, and always to rejoice in thy goodness. This is it that we do believe in thy word. Yea, this is it that we do crave of thee, in the name of our Mediator Jesus Christ, by that prayer which he hath taught us, our Father which art in heaven, etc. Thy blessing, therefore, O our God and Father, peace of our Lord Jesus, with the comfort of the Holy Ghost, be given to us by thy grace, and remain with us for ever. Amen. Prayer 26. A prayer for him that suffereth much by sickness. When you shall be sick, be not slow to pray to God, and he will heal thee. He healeth those that are broken in heart, and cureth their griefs. If they touch the gates of death, and cry unto the Lord in their distress, he will deliver them from their troubles. Ecclesiasticus 38, Psalm 147 and 107. O Lord my God and Father, now it is that in these griefs and pains that oppress me, I do better than heretofore I have acknowledged the corruption and frailty of my nature, and the justice and goodness of thy hand that visiteth me. The original of all flesh is in infection, his temporal habitation is in dust, continually tossed to and fro with storms. Her end is a prey to the worms, and all her glory is buried with her in the earth. Yet is man so blind and depraved, that for a short time wherein he enjoyeth any prosperity and health, he loseth the knowledge of his frail condition, he swells and strayeth from the principal end of his being, and slideth away into the follies and vanities of the world. Thus might I many times have made shipwreck among these lamentable rocks, hadst not thou, my God, stretched forth thy rod of tribulation upon me in my most happy prosperities to prevent my ruin. It is, as even to this day thou dost admonish me of thy discipline, which maketh me to humble myself in thy sight, and to feel my misery, that with heart and voice I may confess that thou art just, O sovereign judge, and good, O gentle father, who wilt thus with one medicine chastise and cure the ulcer of my sins. Come, therefore, thou vapour of the earth, thou shadow of life, thou corruptible flesh, since God for thy instruction and amendment giveth thee travail, put off thyself and submit thee to his spirit, and thy spirit to the father of spirits, and thy affections to his will. Thus, with all thy strength and mind, lift up thyself towards this fatherly hand, from whence the stripe cometh that grieveth thee, towards this arm of the Almighty that hath cast the stone that bruiseth thee, towards this great God, who being pitiful, doth see and hear thee in thy sufferings, who under his hand holdeth both the disease and the cure, the pain and the rest, life and death, to make the one as profitable and healthful unto thee as the other. Then will I say with a contrite heart, yet full of confidence, I have sinned against thee, O my God, I have grievously offended thee, I deserve to be thoroughly chastised, and the devils that I do endure are far less than my offences, which only death and hell are able to counterprise. But thy grace and compassion greater than my sins are eternal upon all those whom thou hast washed, fructified, and justified in thy well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, of which number I do believe I am, and that in him and for his sake thou wilt make me blessed. Forgive me my debts in his name, and ease me of my anguish wherein I remain without strength. I beseech thee, in the bottom of my thoughts, in the bitterness of my heart, and with the words of David, O eternal God, hear my prayer and petition, and let nothing hinder my cry from coming unto thee. Hide not thy face from me, bend down thine ear unto me in the day of my trouble. Make haste and deliver me in the day that I call upon thee, for my days are vanished like smoke, and my bones are dried like chaff. My heart hath been smitten and withered like the grass, that I have forgotten to eat my bread. O Lord, all my desire is before thee, comfort the soul of thy servant. Shall any man tell of thy mercies in the sepulchre, or thy faithfulness in the grave? Thus then, O merciful God, bearing myself in thy chastisements, I will in all patience wait for the seasonable succour of thy hand, as being well assured that while it is incoming, thou wilt not suffer thy spirit of consolation to forsake me in the midst of my tribulation, that my present heaviness shall be unto me the watch of some joy at hand, and that at all adventures the last of my sorrowful days shall be the first of my rest in eternal life. And therefore I will again say with the Apostle, Behold, I am here, deal with me at thy pleasure, and with thy servant Job, albeit God should slay me, yet will I trust in him and reprove my ways in his presence. And with St. Augustine, O Lord, smite here, cut here, bone here, so that thou dost pardon me for ever. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, etc. 
Prayer 27, a prayer in the visitation of the sick. Is there any among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church, and let them pray for him, and anoint him with oil, in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the diseased, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. James chapter 5 O Lord our God, who art all righteousness and goodness, we know that among thy corrections wherewith thou wakenest us to our duties, it pleaseth thee many times to tame our flesh with sundry diseases, for thou dost by the pains that we suffer, advertise us of the cause of our evils which is sin, and of the punishment due to the same, namely death, whereof the infirmities of the body are the ordinary means. And also thou dost withal put us in mind of the great day of thy judgment, which after death doth ensue to life everlasting, full of glory and beatitude to the elect, and of reproach and torments to the reprobate. But of these things the flesh, so long as it feeleth itself at ease, hath least care to hear. Since therefore it hath pleased thee, O just and merciful Father, with thy rod to visit this poor sick person here present, afflicting him for his offences, as himself doth with us confess, we beseech thee that in pardoning him for the love of thy well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, thou wilt make his chastisement to profit him to his correction, so that he may with quiet obedience bear thy visitation, submitting himself voluntary with all his heart to thy holy will, who strikest him not as a severe judge, but as a most merciful father, whereby he may learn to repose his whole trust and assurance in thy love, and as in him that art the author of his life, and canst preserve him, whether it be to abide here below in thy church, or that thou wilt gather him into thy kingdom of heaven. Thus, Lord, on the one side awakening in his soul by his sickness, on the other the feeling of human miseries, make him with the eyes of his faith to behold the eternal blessings thou reservest for him in thy paradise, to live happy for ever, so that he may with patience easily digest the bitterness of that potion that thou hast poured forth unto him, bending his principal desire to enjoy thy presence in heaven. But thou knowest, O merciful Father, that the spirit of thy children is willing, but their flesh is always frail and full of great mistrust, especially in the bitterness of afflictions. Assist therefore this sick person with the plenty and strength of the gift of thy spirit, that he may overcome all the enemies of his peace, and be thou his shield against the assaults and terrors of death, especially if his conscience do trouble and accuse him for his inward and hidden sins, which are open in thy sight. Then that the Holy Ghost, the perpetual comforter of all faithful souls, vouchsafe to represent unto him for his defence the passion and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, who hath himself borne upon the cross all our iniquities, that so he might absolve and discharge us before thy judicial throne, according to the infinite merit of his righteousness, and open the gate of thy kingdom to all that shall believe and be baptized in his name. Thus this poor patient, being comforted in feeling, through a lively and steadfast faith, the fruit and virtue of that earnest penny of salvation that Christ hath left us in his church, namely remission of sins for his sake, also that this hope, which is never confounded, doth keep his spirit quiet, that he may call upon thee, O Lord, and sanctify thy name, even to his last gasp, never fearing the temptations of Satan, of death, or of hell, as being assured that Christ hath overcome them, and led them in triumph, breaking their bonds, so that he may in all Christian confidence cry out with thy apostle, O death, where is thy sting? O hell, where is thy victory? In this manner, O merciful God, let this sick person be by our prayers commended unto thee, and vouchsafe, if it be thy pleasure, to restore him to health with the increase of thy graces, that he may yet amongst us serve to thy glory. If not, but that thou hast otherwise appointed to bring him into thy rest, thy will be done, and accepted both by him and us in all quiet obedience. Receive him into thy heavenly Jerusalem, for he hath his whole recourse unto thee by one only mediator, Jesus Christ, and all his confidence is in thy mercy. Instead of bodily death, grant him the life of his soul amongst thy angels, until that by the resurrection of all flesh, in the great day of the Lord, he may live a whole man in the contemplation of thy glory. And to us all here present, likewise grant thy grace, that we may, as we ought, behold in this mirror the shortness and uncertainty of our days, 
that hereafter we may not desire anything so much as to employ them carefully to thy honour and service. For all these things do we pray unto thee in the name of thy Son, in that prayer which himself hath taught us, our Father which art in heaven, etc. Prayer 28. A prayer for him that feeleth himself to be near death. We know that if this earthly tabernacle be destroyed, we have a building given of God, that is, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. The body is sown in corruption, it shall rise again in incorruption. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 Corinthians 15 O God, my God and Father, justly was man, thy creature, when by sin he had turned from thee, who art the life, cast headlong into the curse both of temporal and eternal death, for thy majesty, being infinitely offended, ought also, in justice, to require a punishment without end, which beginneth even in this life in many miseries, and is perpetuated hell, whereto death is, as it were, the gate. O Lord, the cause of so lamentable a mishap is in our nature, but in thee is pity and compassion, O merciful Father, who after thy unspeakable goodness make us the temporal death which to all men is inevitable, and to the reprobate an entry into hell, to change his quality concerning the elect, being unto them a joyful passage to that happiness which is in heaven. For Jesus Christ, thy eternal Son, to purchase us this benefit, did put on our flesh, and therein healed the wound of sin by his righteousness, and by his oblation satisfied for our debt, triumphing by his resurrection over death, Satan, and hell, for the salvation of those to whom thou givest grace to believe in his name. Now then, my God, since it hath pleased thee of thy great love, thus to accomplish the high mystery of our redemption, I beseech thee, grant me to feel the fruit and efficacy thereof, through the virtue of thy Spirit, even to the last gasp of my life, that then I may render to thee my soul in peace, for I am baptized in the name of Christ, I believe his holy gospel, and am fed with his body and blood in the holy church. True it is, O Lord, that the remembrance of my sin, whereof my conscience doth accuse me, doth greatly trouble me, for the darkness of my understanding hath kept me from knowing thee aright, and the corruption of my heart from worshipping thee in spirit and truth according to thy word. I have neglected this precious treasure, even the voice of my Redeemer, and by my slackness made the seed thereof unfruitful in my soul, many times preferring the love of myself and the vanities of the world, before the love that I owe unto thee, my Creator, and my neighbour for thy sake. I have not effected the cross of thy Son, that I might cheerfully carry mine after him, in renouncing all my concupiscences. Neither have I applied thy chastisement to an upright amendment of life. I have been weak in faith, slow in hope, cold in charity, impatient in tribulation, and more stiff in retaining other men's offences against me than ready to pardon them. What more shall I say, my God? Also many other sins which I cannot express, which, being even at this day hidden from me in my infirmities to overwhelm my soul, were it not for the repentance that thou grantest me, and the trust that I have in thy mercy, through the righteousness of my Saviour Jesus Christ, which it pleaseth thee, in thy fatherly love, to make mine, I see nothing but matter of despair. His sacrifice giveth me peace with thee, his blood cleanseth me, his obedience absolveth me, his wounds do cure me. In his torments my soul findeth her rest. For of all these benefits do I feel thy promise sealed in my heart by thy Spirit, which maketh me to cry unto thee, Abba, Father, and assureth me that thou wilt, of thy free mercy in the name of thy Son, and for his sake, give me remission of my sins and eternal life. Being illuminated, therefore, by this celestial light, I do with the eyes of my mind behold the ship that shall carry me over from earth to heaven, no farther off from the presence of my Redeemer than was that of his disciples when they rode against the tempest, to whom he said, Fear not, for it is I. For in like manner cometh he to meet me, to say unto me, Fear not, assure thyself, be constant, it is I, not the death which thou mayest peradventure fear, but he that hath broken the sting thereof, that hath led it in triumph, that hath broken the bars and bonds even in hell, and who therefore doth make thee to ascend from the grave into the palace of my glory. Thus, my God, strengthened by thy grace with Christian hope, which is not confounded, and covered under the buckler of faith, which the darts of the devil cannot wound, I am able, with a strong motion, to pass in peace from this prison of nature, with these last words of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. And the same Christ, saying unto me, as to the poor thief that was dying, Son, rejoice, 
This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. 